Welcome to the podcast from Temperance Town, the sexiest podcast of world renown. Tony grows a beard to hide his chin, swaps it with Earl, so it glistens. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. Download the pod, you won't get enough of these dapper chaps talking deadly fluff. In Hobo Gulch, they run a homeless mission, clanging and banging with the pentagram of kittens. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. They enjoy their whiskey and local craft beer. By Odin's on Campubis, we give a cheer. Tony's a raccoon when he's booziest. Don't be a savage, be an enthusiast. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. On the frozen tundra, they call it a lock. Tony likes to masturbate in a sock. Brian pisses rocks cause it feels so great I still don't know who the fuck is Tate Salty, salty language Kings of the sexy frontier The boys will let you know when there's a Spurner. Due to male pattern baldness, they don't wear curlers Stay salty, people, that's their closing line And don't forget, have a beer, you'll be fine Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier Salty Hey, enthusiasts, what's happening? This is Salty Language, episode 244. The resurrectionist? No. No. <laughs> the easteriest? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oof. The springiest? Oof. The ball droppingiest? That, yeah. that makes it sound weird. That sounds like a that puberty thing. Weird too. Yeah. The ball slappiest <laughs> podcast? No. No. <laughs> no. Let's I'll just, just move. Sexy. Let's just move on. <laughs> uh, for those of you who may be just joining us, I'm Brian. Joining me as always is Tony. Hey now. Since I've, you know, <laughs> as I seem to remember the introduction part of our podcast once every eh, 20 episodes. <laughs> yeah, well, then they better stay tuned if they're doing not aware. I guess, yeah. Right? Yeah. They're just listening, and they're just like, I can't tell. I don't know who's who, you know? It's like, that's why DC put out those guides for years and years. It's the who's who's guide to the Salty Language podcast. It's, it's true. It's a pretty thin magazine, but... <laughs> and sometimes, I mean, they don't really need to know our names when their their genitals are pulsing so hard. <laughs> it's true. With all, the, all that electricity running through them, they have to be right? careful because if they reach climax, they may be like... Like Zeus just throwing lightning bolts out of their genitals. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> or awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, hey, I took her back home and I Zeused her. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I Zeused her. Now, see, when you say that, I immediately go back to the movie No Holds Barred, and I'm picturing Tiny Lister. Like oh. like that Zeus with the crazy eyes and it's crazy eye. Mm-hmm. The big Z tattooed on the side of his head, big shoulder pads. No, well, because Zeus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I assume he had shoulder pads like any woman in the eighties. Oh, they were worse. They were so bad. Did he have oh, the fimolet? <laughs> no, no, he was he had totally totally bald. I'm talking Zeus, not not the not tiny Lister, but oh, actual Zeus. actual Zeus. Oh yeah, clearly he had like the hockey mullet. You know, yes. like the cascading <laughs> mullet, like Yarmir <laughs> Yager, you know? <laughs> ah, well, it's like very, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Very fashionable almost, uh, yet aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, much like this yeah. podcast. <laughs> fashionable yet aggressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly. That's our selling point and stuff. It is. It is. Yeah. Whenever some, whenever someone asks us about the show, that's the first thing I tell them. You know. Oh man. Yeah. Fashionable yet aggressive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Tight but loose. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> All right. Starting off, I had no idea we were gonna go into like you know Zeus light throwing lightning bolts out of genitals and cascading mullets and well to man. be fair when when you man. say hater enthusiast we have, have generally very little idea what we're getting ourselves into that is absolutely true you know it's funny because you know we always go into the show with I, like my show notes for this week i have some things pulled up but i have well now i have something written in my show notes but i had zero written down this week yeah, and, I got a few things wrote down, but it's just like mental. It's just reminders of me to talk, you know. Yeah, like, that's usually what mine is, it. too. Like yep. one word reminders. Yeah. And it's funny because that part of the show is the absolute most unscripted part after I do the, the intro. Because I, I say the same thing pretty much every week. You know, from that point forward, it's it's just like I, I have no idea where we're going. Yeah. And it's like you pulled the train brake handle off and we just start rolling down the track <laughs> that's true yeah and i'm sitting there trying to figure out how to jam the thing back in you know oh man all these sex euphemisms today it's just <laughs> it's true it's, <laughs> true. it's <laughs> fashionable yet aggressive it's true well i mean hell yeah i need to put out like a do rag that says that on it right it's also uh you know the our upcoming scent He's fashionable yet aggressive. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at first you're like, oh, wow, that smells. Oh, my God. What is that? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, it has it's like. It's <laughs> salty language. <laughs> oh, man. I'm picturing, I'm picturing uh, the turnaround from the essence of Dev with that, you know, like for a commercial. Oh man. We, we can't completely steal it. No, idea. no, no, no. I'm I'm meaning him doing it, not oh. us. He he'd be our spokesmodel for <laughs> uh, the salty language. No, because the essence of Dev would be his own musk. So That's you know. true. Musk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said that. I'm just Oh man. Ah well. Hello to everyone. <laughs> well, yes, indeed. Well, welcome to Salty Language. How how was everybody's zombie Jesus day? Yeah, I guess that's where we start. I, you know, I completely even forgot that's where we're at. Yeah, I know, right? That since we recorded last, that, that you know, that's in the uh, week of recap, if you will. It is. Yeah. How was yours? It, you know, it was a, it was a thing. <laughs> yeah. We don't really do Easter on my side of family because we're not super religious, but, you know, Jeannie's side is. So there's always Easter thing, and well, one it was funny because I used to like, and I should, I probably should, still should, but it's, it was such a chaotic mess leading up to Easter this week because of Chicago and all that. Right. This week, this year, yeah. Then normally I stage some sort of elaborate like scavenger hunt for my kids, sometimes involving like pictures and clues and QR codes and. Right. Longitude and latitude. Yeah, Key, it gets a little nutty sometimes. Keys to their shackles. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> and antidote to what you gave them in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Hand saws. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to play a game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you but know, the I way Easter should that. be done. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, it's uh, as is tradition. Right. But I really didn't do anything this year for him. And I even asked him. And, you know, Logan just turned 15, which is mind blowing. Mm hmm. And, you know, Leah's 11, and I'm like, whoa, they thought it was hilarious. Yeah, studio and audience. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, guys, do you, are you really missing out on, like, the Easter thing this year? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, and I'm looking at Logan, I'm like, aren't you a little old? <laughs> and he's like, no, it's still fun. Yeah. Like, God damn it. Like, great. Yeah. So I'm going to have to come up with just something random in well, the middle of the year and let, surprise them. Now, I have a suggestion for you. What you need to do at this point is start ramping it down. Like, just kind of, you know, do it, but, you know, maybe don't go all the way. That way it's kind of, it starts becoming kind of disappointing. Then they'll be like, yeah, you know, you don't have to do this anymore. Then you're out. Ah, I see. Yeah, see, so if you like, maintain a great level, they'll still keep wanting it. So, like, I'll hand them, like, some sort of note, like I usually do, if it has, like, some sort of clues on it, and mm -hmm. they'll just open it up, and there's nothing there, and then they look up for a note, and everything that I hid is just in the middle of the living room. <laughs> <laughs> that may be a little too aggressive. <laughs> yeah, right. You forgot the fashionable part, you know? Oh, right. Yeah, I'll, right. I'll have a scarf on. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Perfect. An infinity scarf. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And there you go. You'll have the infinity scarf and hidden in it will be a bountiful, you know, oh, all the stuff. Yeah. Just all the things. Yeah. Like a high collared infinity scarf. So I look like a final fantasy character. Yes. Yeah, perfect. And it'll just now be it's all coming together. It'll be filled with fanciful trinkets. <laughs> treats galore. <laughs> Actually, not really, because we, we don't really do treats. Yeah. This sounds like a way to get arrested, though, also. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. But, you know, we, we, went, to the, uh, we went to the in-laws for dinner. And, uh, I mean, it was that gorgeous-ass day. It was almost 70, so we just hung out outside, which was nice. Had a couple beers. Right. Smack, smashing out some all day. Right, just like Jesus did. Yep. Just like Jesus did. Yep. Although, uh, you know, I was talking to First the thing he did when he got out of the cave, well, he yeah, was like, oh, he's like, hit me with an all day. <laughs> oh, refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, we're, we're in line at the buffet mm -hmm. getting our Easter grub. And there's one thing about my in-laws, and I love them. But every holiday dinner, it's the same. Yeah. It's like the same food. Yeah, I understand. My family's that way, too. You know? Yeah. There's no changing it up ever. Right. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And that was when, uh, you know, the risk. She's like, um, I didn't know every meal for the holidays was the same here. I'm like, yes, every holiday now, is Groundhog's Day. <laughs> okay, now let me ask you a question. When yeah. you say every holiday, you literally mean every holiday, right? Not like every Easter is the same, but every yeah. Easter, Thanksgiving, only, Christmas. The only change up. Might be Thanksgiving, might have turkey. Okay, okay. If we call, if you go backwards from our, from our Thanksgiving episode here, right? It was crockpot turkey. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, it's always it's always honey baked ham. It's always kibasa, which I'm fine with because right. I'll just have, elbow yeah. drop kibasa. Well, so. if, if, oh, anyone who's a long time listener to this show knows you enjoy your long meats. So yes. <laughs> sausages. Yes. <laughs> Any and lengthy meat you can't get enough of stuffing them in your right. faces. <laughs> I almost said faces. <laughs> like somehow you have multiple faces. I don't know. It's uh, you never know. Weird yeah. things happen. Right. Fashionable yet aggressive, I guess. Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh but yeah, and there's always like a succotash and like potato salad, deviled eggs. It's always the same stuff, right. which is fine, but after a while That's it's like so much different than my family. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we brought the veggie trigs. I'm like, I know how your family eats, and I need some fucking vegetables. That's actually a complaint I have about mine. I think I've mentioned this on past ones, is that there's not, like, just vegetables. It's casserole vegetables, you know? Right, that's no bueno. Yeah, and I'm I'm getting to where I'm like, oh, it's just all so heavy. I can't. Yeah. I, I know. I, I'm just, like, I can't do it anymore. It's ridiculous, because it's like, I don't want the potato salad. I don't want the Jello with free floating shit in it. <laughs> you know, I don't want the succotash. So it was like kibasa, ham, and then just like raw vegetables. <laughs> so basically, like, you just took I the legs. you took the kibasa, rolled it up in the ham. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. Like who needs a bun? I got ham. That's right. Efficient is what that is, my friend. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's how the dinosaurs would have wanted it. <laughs> I'm. Uh, that's how they ate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They fired up kibasa under dino grills and rolled it in ham. <laughs> dino grills. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that's exactly exactly how it happened. Yeah. yeah. I've I've seen the documentaries. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like this idea. I think we need to make this documentary. I agree. Yeah. Animated series. Mm -hmm. I'm just picturing a T Rex like trying to grill with really long grill tongs. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you know, obviously it's got the hat on and the Of course. I don't know. Cook, yeah. Cauldron. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It yeah. can't tie it, though. I don't know how it wears it. Miss, Mrs. Dino's got out. <laughs> right. M Mrs. Rex comes up and Mrs. ties it. Mrs. Rex. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's yeah. fair. T ties the apron around his, his manly waist. <laughs> I'm so picturing like the, the giant tongs. <laughs> I'm picturing like the oven mitt, you know, like they may have. And it's just a really tiny one because, you know, tiny hands. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's just looks ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, Dude, you know how ridiculous the, the Rex's kitchen looks. I know with with enormous tools and tiny. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> it's true too. Like everything is is it looks like those uh, giant chef head. <laughs> yeah, it looks like these ridiculously long reachers, like that you know kids and a uh, senior citizens use. You know, like they should be working in a forge. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh man. 
uh, you know, T-Rex, you know, everyone used to say the, you know, I wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot pole. And T-Rex is like, I wish I could say that, but I have to touch everything with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> That's my utensil. Yeah. That's how I touch things. <laughs> I don't know why I'm picturing the Rex as Jewish. I... <laughs> <laughs> Although they wouldn't be firing up kibbas and ham. So yeah, probably not. No, probably not. Oh man, maybe they're not practicing. I don't know. So I, the these documentaries that we just <laughs> talked about yeah. needs to be rolled into a T Rex like sitcom, and I'm not talking yeah. like dinosaurs. Yeah, I want like actual dinosaurs, not mm-hmm. like you know. I'm not talking Jurassic Park. No, no, you're like... talking about me as Briceratops. I understand. <laughs> well, yeah, you as Briceratops. Yeah. you could be the the husband of the family. Sure, why not? You know, sure. Because, you know, I'm a, a fat slob, so I could easily be the husband, because that's how casting goes on TV shows. So, Although, although if you're Bryce Ceratops, you're not a T-Rex. Oh, you're right. No. Nope. got to be a T-Rex. That, I'm, best friend. I'm the next door neighbor, best friend. Next door neighbor. Yeah. yeah. I'm the Bernie Rubble, if you will. Yeah. yeah cracking open beers on your horns. Oh, pff, all the time. That's where I'm smashing them when I'm done, dude. <laughs> nice. Or when we're about to chug, you know, when we're going to shotgun them. I hit him on my horn and then shotgun him. And you, you need some sort of catchphrase, though. Yeah. Because every neighbor has a catchphrase. <sighs> yeah, that's a good point. I don't know what my catchphrase would be. I mean, you know, like, since you're Briceratops saying, like, hey, I'm a little horny, it seems aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> True. For, especially for every episode. <laughs> True. And also inappropriate, probably, for many settings. So Yeah. yeah. Although, if I'm drunk all the time... <laughs> That's true. Maybe fine. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that would be. Well, uh, we'll have writers for this kind of stuff. That's true. That's uh, we true. just throw the big ideas out there. They get to work on the minutia, you know? Right. <laughs> Damn it. I can't stop picturing the fucking grill with the... Uh, man. All right. Uh, I think it's great. Yeah, me too. <laughs> At least a cooking show starring a T-Rex. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that would be awesome. I'm all in favor of this. Right? Yeah. It doesn't even have to be a real dinosaur. It's just a guy in a dinosaur suit going around. Like, basically doing what Guy Fieri does on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Just in a dinosaur suit? But <laughs> a guy in a dinosaur suit. <laughs> like, the, like the one that we talked about a couple episodes, or probably more than a couple. Mm-hmm. Um was it a uh, Jurassic Park horse? Yes. <laughs> One of those inflatable ones, but he's just in a kid. You know, how quickly that guy would light on fire when that plastic oh, inflatable suit be... backs into a burner. Oh, yeah, it'd be terrible. <laughs> yeah. The show would last one episode and he'd die in a horrible fire. Yeah, we'd have to fix that somehow, green screen it or something. I don't know, but yeah, that's what we do. We just green screen it. You just have somebody pose in there, and then you just, that's all you do. You just take episodes of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives right now with Guy Fieri. Fietti, right. whatever you want to call him, and then you just, you know, um, replace him, you know, digitally with someone in a, a dinosaur costume. Mm-hmm. Perfect. This show would be way more entertaining. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, just the opening scene where he comes rolling through <laughs> his Camaro. Yeah. That's exactly. dinosaur. That's right. <laughs> that's awesome. I know, right? I'd watch that show just by itself. <laughs> Oh man! If it was like dinosaurs and cars getting coffee, I'm in. Oh yeah, I would. I would certainly watch that. Yeah, man. I mean, I'd hate to put Jerry Seinfeld out of a job since he needs the money and all, but you know. Yeah, this needs still to great. Yeah. Oh, all right. We should probably move on. <laughs> no, we should. The episode where he's uh, he's got what's his name, T- Stephen Knight or whatever, the guy who played Newman on Seinfeld. Yeah. Because then it could be the spitter dinosaur in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they come up. The windows are all tinted and everything. He goes to get in and he just freaks out. You know, because the, the scene in the movie, he opens the door and the spitter's in the seat. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's awesome. Yeah, I agree. Oh, man. Good times there. Good times Ooh. indeed. Hee. See, I t- see what I did there, Brian. I tied yeah. together Easter Jesus holiday with dinosaurs. Yeah, as it should be. You like that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've seen plenty of pictures of of Jesus riding around on a dinosaur, so it's clearly historically accurate. My favorite one where he's shooing the uh, brachiosaurus. He's like, <laughs> yeah. Shoo, get out of here! Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, that's perfect. Yeah, you know, I I got to spend Easter fighting a like sinus cold or something. That was a good time. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. Did you, you know, put like Sudafed and Easter eggs and go hunting. Yeah, yeah, that's you know that's what I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> until the neighborhood meth heads find them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Every year, too. Jeez. No, I, um, you know, because, like, Saturday it started warming up. Right. Here, because it was cool. And then, you know, we've had this, like, wacky weather where it's been, like, two days where it's been, like, gorgeous. And then two days where it's been not bad, but colder. Like, what, 20-ish degrees colder. And then yeah. it just seems to alternate. And in between these days has also been rain. And that's a blast for somebody who suffers from sinus <laughs> issues. <laughs> so yeah, that's fair. This whole week has just been hot trash. So <laughs> good old hot garbage. Yeah, ringing endorsement for that. So yeah, that was what I did on Easter. So my mom brought me a a plate of uh, vittles from the family get together and uh, of various casserole vegetables. <laughs> yeah, it it is. I mean, it's fine. It tastes fine. It's just that it's. It's so it's a lot of carbs and heaviness though, and it's like I ate it, and I'm like, oh, why did I eat so much? You know, like why did I do that to myself? It's like clearly I hate myself. You know, <laughs> had the old Louis C.K. moment, you know, to where you right. know I don't stop eating until I hate myself or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's was I don't stop until I fall. Uh, I stop when I hate myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh man, what a terrible idea that was. But yeah, you know, so other than that, it was it was fine. It it was so nice though. It sucked, you know, feeling like hot garbage on a day when it's like seventy and gorgeous out. Yeah, know? I'm I think I got a little bit of a like mild sunburn on my head just because I was sitting in the sun the whole time. So this is like, oh I've been waiting for this since yeah. the last time I sat outside and it was warm out. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. Well, I that, that's the worst part about or the like tease of this is that, you know that was the nicest day I think of the last gap of time, you know, and all the other days it's, we've had a few that have been like 60, 65 that have been pretty nice. And, you know, it's like you go outside for a little bit and then, you know, like me, I get outside and I'm like, Oh, it's like, I, you know, I can feel that there's like rain coming because there's a pressure change and stuff, you know, it's right. Uh, yeah. Good times. Good times. Let me tell you, I had, um, uh, an interesting situation this week in a store, though. Um, All right. Is it deli rage? It kind of is deli rage, but it wasn't in a deli. But uh, I actually I put I talked about it in our kick group a little bit. And I actually <laughs> I went into detail on the crazy life a little bit about it, too, which was I got into a verbal disagreement with a woman at a store because I was walking by her and I heard her. There was a little uh, like a 13 ish year old girl standing outside the bathroom. And this right. woman and the girl just looked kind of down, right? And this woman walks by her and looks at her and tells the girl to smile because boys only think girls are pretty if they smile. And I just lost my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just turned to the woman and I'm like, how dare you tell her that? Because it wasn't the girl's mom or anyone who was with her. It was just some random like some random twatter. Like 55, 60-year-old type woman just walking by. And again, I know it was coming from a good place. She was trying to cheer the girl up is what she was trying to do. But you know me long. You've known me long enough to know I hate it when people are like, just smile or what uh, drives yeah. me batshit. It always it has. It takes more muscle to smile than it does yeah. to frown. It's like, and it takes more restraint RKO. to not. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it takes more restraint to not murder you than it does to kill you. So yeah. it's like, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Weird. It probably takes less muscles. To smile than it does for me to stab you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Out of nowhere. RKO. Um, so I'm just like, how dare you say that to her? I'm like, first of all, if she doesn't feel like smiling, she shouldn't feel like she has to smile. No one on the – nobody should have to feel, smile if they don't feel like it. Ever. You know? Right. Some people just don't smile. That's not who they are. I'm not a big smiler. Like I told Heno on uh, Crazy Life, I'm like, I'm not a huge, like, smiling guy. I laugh or I smirk. That's more of my deal, you know? What if this girl had palsy in the face Yeah, couldn't right. smile? Well, and that goes into the, another part of it that I was like, you know, you don't know. Maybe this girl's had a horrible day. Yeah. You know, for all we know, maybe she's found out someone died or she's having horrible pain in her body or something. You know, we don't – you have no idea of this stuff. You're just looking at her and assuming. 
And then third of all, no girl should do anything because that's what boys want. Right. And I mentioned this on the crazy life and, and I a hundred percent because girls don't have to do anything to make themselves more attractive to boys because boys are stupid. Girls just have to be there and boys <laughs> will do dumb things for them. Okay. Yes. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. And if you that's don't believe it, me in our DNA, right. If you don't believe me, go look up any like boob avatar on the internet and look at the thirst roll in, <laughs> you know? Um, but more than that, it's just like she shouldn't have to. Like I said, it's just more of a. If she doesn't feel like smiling, she shouldn't have to smile. That's it, you know. And also, you know, on a side note, and I mentioned this in the other thing too, which is that you know, I, I think a girl who smirks or uh, sneers, you know, like you're gonna catch my eye way more than smiling Jane over there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm all about that. So. What she told the girl isn't even 100% factual. So, pfft. But, yeah, yeah. when I said that, the woman just got kind of pissy at me. And she just, you know, well, I'm just trying to cheer her up and walked away. And the girl's mom came out of the bathroom. And the girl looked at her mom. And she's like, that guy yelled at that woman for telling me to smile. (laughs) 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 So, yeah. They should have been like, after you told off the old bitty, they're like, and remember, girl, if you want to smile, check out saltylanguage.com. Right. That's what I'm saying. Boom, drop the mic. Yeah. Oh it just, you know. Come I, back. Pick, pick, pick up. <laughs> right. Sorry, that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> I just get up in the woman's face, you know. And, uh, and that's the bottom line. Because <laughs> kick stun. You know, yeah, and then. Someone throws you a beer. Yeah. <laughs> they just start throwing me Steve Weisers. And, you know, I'm just clanging them together over. <laughs> That's I would like to see. Oh man, it just it just pisses me off, and you know I'm sure I overstep my boundaries too. But it was just it makes me mad, like that this woman just took this assumption, knowing nothing about this girl, and she right. just oversteps. And again, I understand she's coming from a good place, and it, but it's I, no, just stop it. You know, you don't know what kind of day she's had. You know, exactly. Boom. All right. There's my. She might have just found out that you know, cooking with the Rexes just got canceled. Uh, what? It hasn't even gotten picked up yet. <laughs> I know. Uh, damn it! You made it out of post production. <laughs> damn it! How come nothing we, nothing we ever create gets picked up? This is horseshit. Great. Horseshit. It is horseshit. That's Back, what it's. Uh, I don't know where it is. Never mind. <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a documentary called "It's Horseshit," and it's gonna be about all the ideas we've had that we never put to paper, and it's just gonna be us just pining on how they should have been picked up. Mm, I, I like it, but not recognizing that we never did the work to get them picked up. <laughs> like uh, Bear Squad. Ah, uh, horseshit! <laughs> Bear Squad was solid. White Mudden. Ah, uh, horseshit! <laughs> Hobo Gulch. <laughs> Ah, horseshit! Macho of their time. Ah, horseshit! That's the closest one, though. <laughs> that one we put a couple steps into. <laughs> that one at least that got... had a little bit of legs. Yeah. Like, I did a couple Photoshops. Right. I think there was an elbow greased for a minute on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, that's, that's you know, what I got for... That's been pretty much my week there. Oh, and um, I, I got taken off of my... Uh, the antidepressant that was you know, making me have really nasty thoughts and, uh, horrid nightmares. So, Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. So I'll be starting a new one here before too long. Brian, when you're having these horrid nightmares, did you try smiling? Damn it. I didn't. You're right. You son of a bitch. <laughs> and that's, that's the only way the boys will like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh wait, no, it isn't because I'm a bear. So, you know, yeah, I'm, I already am too. built in. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, if if I were to announce that I'm gay, I would probably do all right. So, yeah. <sighs> what do you? Oh, you know, speaking not not of being gay, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Tony, no. Um, so while we were in Chicago, you know, these dating yeah. these dating apps uh, change your location automatically. You know, because it's based on you know yeah, the GPS and shit, right? Yeah, it's NSA tracking. I got you. Yeah. So, you know, while we're here, I get occasional messages and whatnot, but they're fairly sparse, right? 
right? We got in Chicago and dude, the first few hours we were in Chicago, I got like five messages and like over 50 views on my one profile in like the first few hours we were there. <laughs> nice. And I was like, yeah, clearly I don't, this is the wrong area for me. It's time. It's, it's, it's time for me to move to a big city where at least I can so a higher population. I right. Exactly. Well, they recognize that I'm fashionable yet aggressive there. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> they felt the electricity and they're like, what's going on? The city feels weird. Well, because, you know, the people around here have just, they're just got accustomed to the electricity. Yeah, exactly. Here. Well, yeah, they've been dealing with it for all these years, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just thought it was kind of weird how, not weird, but I've noticed that when we've been in different areas that are a little more, um, like when we've been in like Ann Arbor, uh, when we've been in more towns that are culturally diverse, hipper right. towns and areas, I've noticed that I get better hits on my profile. And it's probably yeah. because my profile does not con uh, contain the words outside, camping, bonfires. <laughs> Glock. Yes. Winchester. I'm not holding up a deer in my profile right, yet. Right, right. Yeah. I'm going to hold mm -hmm. up. I want to hold up. Sister butt. What I <laughs> Sister butt. Wow. I, I want to, like, what we need to do is get that, like, triceratops, <laughs> like, um, suit and i need to like hold it up like i hunted it you know like i ki killed it and take a picture of that for my profile <laughs> what, what if we get like a, just a dinosaur toy we do a little force perspective yeah that'd work too i just yeah. want to play on that because there's so many women that are like if you have a picture of you holding up a dead animal please don't <laughs> please what don't message hamburger me. <laughs> that would be funny <laughs> you need some way of holding i don't know maybe like you hold up like a, a turkey you know like a full turkey that's been cooked you know like right. you're holding it up by the legs like, in the like same it's in the roasting pan like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> i like this idea i'm sure that would offend some people because you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, all i eat is celery stalks <laughs> i'm a celerarian Wow, like a, cel a, a celery. <laughs> yeah, it's like, go die in front of a celery truck. <laughs> Please. <laughs> a celery. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. So, like like I mentioned a little, uh, earlier, uh, Logan turned 15. Mm hmm And it, he's officially allowed to date. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's got himself a girl. Oh, yeah. But she's out on spring break, so you can't see her. <laughs> she's on vacation of her family. Oh, it's very strange, right? Though to think my son is fifteen, yeah, it's mind blowing, really. Yeah, yeah. There's that. Yeah, that you've loosed a set of hormones onto the earth. Yep, and then next year you'll be able to drive, which is good and bad. Right. Good, because I can be like, boy. Go to the grocery store. Right. We need milk. Hey, daddy needs you to pick him up from the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Come get daddy and Brian from the bar. <laughs> like, dad, I was looking at your phone when I when I was texting you. Why does it say Uber? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be so great to do. You you really, I hope you remember that. Like, like Siri, call Uber and call Logan. Yes, like while he's in the car or something. Or just text him some night. You'd just be like, hey, Uber, I need a car. <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. Oh, that would be hilarious. Too good. Too uh, you're like, f finally, you're... <laughs> You're of the age you can be serviceable to me. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've waited 16 long years for this. Six more and you can buy me beer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, finally. Ugh. Speaking of beer. Yeah. How excited are you about the thought of bourbon barrel Scotty Karate? Very. Yeah. Very. I uh, sent them a message to see if they would uh, hold a four for hold me. You, hold your four pack? Yeah. yeah I haven't, my, uh, haven't heard back from them, though. I'm sure they will. Uh, my my worried. coworker worried. He he had the day off today. Yeah, and like I'm sitting at home and he just sends me a text, and he's like, because I told him before, I'm like I was at Anderson's, I sent you that picture too. It has Scotty Karate still on the shelf, which surprised me. Right. And I bought a four pack and I sent the picture to you and I sent the picture to him because I know he likes beer and he's never had Scotty. And I'm like, hey, if you go to Anderson's, make sure you pick this up. 
And then he texted me today that Scotty Crotty just came out with Bourbon Barrel. And he was all fired up. Oh, and he should be. I just, there's nothing about Bourbon Barrel Age, Scotty Karate, that is that can be bad. I just don't see yeah. how it can be. I am all I the agree. excited. I'm just glad, honestly, that it it isn't in more of a, a package than four. It's yeah, because for my own uh, safety, it's probably. I looked it up and untapped, good. and they're like nine seven fives. Oh, that's only a little bit more than it's bad. Yeah, it's only a little more, mm. but I just can't wait to taste it. Oh no, I'm just saying that I probably will drink it and be like, "Oh, this is so I good! I want, quick. yeah, like I want all of them." Yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I got. It. I'm gonna go grab mine tomorrow, and I can't wait. Yeah, because I like after I sent off texts and stuff, I like hopped right on the the phone. Yeah. Hey guys, can you send me a set of four pack for Tony? And they're like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." I'm like, "I can get that tomorrow, right?" Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Perfect. I should have just called. I don't know why I did. I just went through the Facebook thing. I should have just called him and been like, hey, yo. Hey, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. I'm excited to try oh, that. Man, no doubt. I may I may do a Periscope on me drinking that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Like, I like that. And by yeah. drinking that, I don't mean like, oh, I'm going to casually taste one. I mean applying four directly to my face. <laughs> You're going to put on some nice music on your gramophone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes as it should be yeah i'm gonna put some nice house music on dis, 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 dis. <laughs> that's oh. terrible idea. yeah you're right it is uh, so anything else happened this week before um, we get into the meat of the show we got we got ourselves a uh, a sick ass new game yeah oh, oh that's great is that the I one can... you picked up at c2e2 yes excellent yeah, the one I bought C two E two. We finally played it last weekend. Cash and Guns. Okay, an amazing game. Also, my favorite store. It's much like forties and nines. <laughs> exactly. And I really want to get a group of people going because you can play up to eight people with this, right? Okay. So the whole point of the game is everybody has a foam pistol. Yeah. And you're like a crim- group of criminals, and you're splitting loot at okay. the end after a heist. Right. Right. So there's like eight piles of cards which represent the loot. And every turn, and you have eight cards called their bullet cards. Three are bangs, five are clicks. Okay. Okay, so you determine if you're going to play a bang or a click. And, every, you know, the loot cards get flipped up. And then there's the godfather, who's the oldest player in the game. And they go three, now, two, Hold on one. R- really quick. How do you determine the godfather? The oldest player. The actual, like, legit oldest yep. player. Okay. Legit oldest okay. player. Because That's when you go to split up the loot, you can take the Godfather token and you become the Godfather. Oh, okay. Right? Mm. But so I'd, I'd, when the, after the count of three, you point your gun at somebody. Everyone points their gun. And then you have the option to, like, back out so you can lay your little player character down. So you're like, whoa, I'm out of this shooting thing, and you lose your bullet card, though. If you're the Godfather, you can choose to let one player aim at somebody else. Like, you go, hey, shoot that guy, you know? Yeah. And then anybody who's still in, it's another countdown. It's three, two, one, bonsai, and then you reveal your card. So if it's a click, you're fine. If you if you get shot, your guy gets out, and you don't get to share the loot. Okay. You, you take three bullets, you're dead, and you're out of the game. Now, does like whoever kill you get your share of the loot at that point? Then or it's if you, there's certain like cards you can also add in called powers that mm-hmm. like one of them is called the vulture, and you get to take loot from dead players. Okay. So. But not and essentially, like, if you're dead, you're just out. Okay. I didn't but know if they, it was, like, everyone, like, starts the game with equal shares. And you know what I mean? Like, every person that dies, you know what I mean? To where, essentially, yeah. the last player standing has all the loot, you know? But you, you go through eight rounds of this, and you're just trying to get the most loot. Whoever has the most loot in the game wins. Oh, okay. But half the time, you know, if you're, if you if, if you're not ballsy enough to, like, stay in the game, you might just, you know, you don't get enough loot. But if you're too ballsy, you get killed. Yeah. It's a pretty fun that game. Sounds, that sounds all right. It sounds easy, easy enough to play while drinking, too. Oh, for sure. Which and is it, it gets, awesome. I mean, it's it's very fun when it's 3 two, one Everyone point, is pointing guns at each other. It's like the end of Reservoir Dogs. Sure. Or a normal night of drinking for us. Or a normal night. <laughs> <laughs> I just blew out the mic. I, I did, too. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, it's 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 real cool. I'm I'm really glad I bought it. Yeah, I can't wait to play it yeah, with we, more than four people. Yeah, you gave me a real brief synopsis of it when we were in Chicago and I was like, that sounds like a pretty fun game, so awesome. It's I mean not I've actually like we've played it, you know, probably four or five times. Because mm. you know, it's another thing we did at Easter, play cash and guns. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Sure. Yeah, we had, it, it's it's good good stuff, but we only had four people play it. You know, it just is like ah, I want I want to have all eight. Yeah, and we definitely get enough people crazy. together. Yeah, I was gonna say when we get enough people together, we usually could get somewhere near eight at least. Yeah, Even if we don't get we eight, gather yeah. up the 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 posse and do a game night. <laughs> shoot them up, shoot them up. Yeah, it's the posse. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um. Nice. Oh. Oh. I have an error. I have a thing that I decided today. Yeah. I despise social media on fucking April Fool's Day. Oh, for sure. I, I'm glad you brought this up. I actually meant to write that down and forgot to. It's my least favorite day on social media. Yeah. Well, like was, aside from maybe any time there's a political debate. Well, yeah, fair enough. But, yeah, they're really well, close. I, I was scrolling through Instagram, mm -hmm. right? Like eating some food at work, just manja, manja, manja. Right. Scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> right. And uh, I'm like, I see, you know, because I follow found founders because I love their beer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they had a thing that was like, oh, the results are in. We just got to determine what we're going to make our first flavored all day. And it was like lemon, lime, blueberry, salt, and vinegar. Ugh. And I'm like, what God. the fuck is this? Salt and vinegar. Like, yeah, I'll be honest, the first two are, you know, because, uh, oh, what's that one that's out there now? It's, um, uh, I can't remember. It's like a hoppy beer, but it's got like an orange kind of, it's Citra something that it, it, one of the, the beer places that's local has. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, sorry. I'm sure I probably had yeah. it, but I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <clears throat> but, um, but so I'm like, I was like, what the? Why? And I look, and the first comment was some guy, man, salt and vinegar sounds crazy, but I bet you it's really good. Oh. And, and and I wasn't even putting it together or what the day was. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? And I was like, whatever. And I kept scrolling. And then it was on it, who's a, you know, it's like a supplement and exercise company, and I liked their products. So I followed them on Instagram. They're like, our first kettlebell inspired by the rock. And it was like a, like a boulder with a handle. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is? And then I was like, oh god damn it, it's April first. Yeah, and I, I immediately just got off Instagram. Yeah. I'm like, fuck this thing. That's usually what I do. Is like every year on April first, I usually like if I I'm on something, I just I just scroll. I don't even read shit because everyone thinks it's funny because you know on every day everyone thinks they're a comedian on social media, and then on April first. They are go like there's always you know oh, I'm pregnant or I'm getting married or I'm and I'm like uh it's like this is the dumbest stuff like at least yes. try it. it's like, eh, I don't know it's and I, like for a brief second the founders one was like because yeah blueberry lemon lime could be legit <laughs> it, it they actually that's what I was getting at is there's yeah. actually like I said there's I can't remember the the beer company. But there's one out right now that's uh it, it's an uh, it's a citrusy hoppy beer, right? And and I was like, so you literally could take all day, put lemon lime with it, and try it, you know? Well, because and blueberry I mean, makes sense. I could I could see it. I don't know that I'd want it, but you know, <laughs> I it wouldn't put me put it past me that for them to do something like that. Because mm -hmm. like at one of the beer fests we were at, they had uh. What do they call them? The Randalls or whatever, where they filter the beer through yep. the shit. Mm -hmm. And they had a full pineapple. And it was like all day through pineapple. Yeah. You know? And I was like, so I was like, ah, I could see them maybe making it. Although Salt Vigor was like, that seems too that fucking one, crazy. Oof, man. But yeah, I, uh, it's just like, God, fuck everybody on April 1st. Yeah, right. I've never been a huge, I mean, when I was a. Uh, when I was a you know a rambunctious kid, I think I was into the prank stuff like, oh, I bought the gum that eats your finger and <laughs> the fucking hand buzzer and yeah. know, all that dumb shit from the magic shop. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, nowadays it's like, like if I went to work and someone took my work van and filled it with packing peanuts. Yeah. There'd probably be a murder. Yeah, exactly. Because I'd be like, I'm here to get shit accomplished, yeah. not clean up this. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. And I, you yeah. know, I was part of some stuff. Like, you know, we, we, you know, the one year we shrink wrapped a dude's shoes because he left him at work all the time. You know, like we shrink wrapped his shoes like five, six times. 
and uh, you know stuff like that. But that wasn't so much about April Fool's Day as it was we were just tired of smelling his shoes at work. Well, so, that's fair. You probably would have done that, you know, yeah, December 25th. We absolutely would have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and ju- we had just put a bow on it on Christmas, though, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The only, like, I was watching Jeopardy tonight, and they did a bunch of edits to the show um, because it was April Fool's Day. Like, at one point, right. they showed all the dollar amounts backwards, um, and, like, one guy hit a daily double, and they used the sound effect that they used from, like, the 80s. Uh, one time when Alex Trebek gave an answer, it was a, a picture of him from like forever ago when his mustache was still darker and his hair was darker. And, you know, they right. did all those kind of cuts. And I was like, that's kind of funny. I like that, that you know, no harm, no foul in this. It, it's just kind of a fun, you know, editing thing in there. I don't mind the fun, nonsensical stuff like yeah. that. Like but that. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Ugh. Like Netflix. I was perusing yeah. Netflix the other day and everything was John Stamos. Mm. It was like comedies that John Stamos likes. Yeah. New releases added by John Stamos. You know, it was all, every, every category is something John Stamos. Yeah. Which at first I was like, because I know they've done stuff like, hey, here's a special category for, but then I'm like, huh? And, oh, God, it's fucking goddamn April 1st. Yeah. That was the first thing that I know. It's because I was watching uh, some episodes of Daredevil last night. And when, as right. soon as I, you know, started it up and it, I saw John Stamos's name like four times on my screen and I was like, oh, this must be their April Fool's thing. I was like, this is really weak. Like, I understand they're not going to do anything too, like, they're not going to do anything offensive or anything, but I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it, you know, I, I if they were going to do something, they should have changed like your, um, like the my list thing would have been kind of funny if they would have like just changed it all to like Fuller House or something like that. But when you actually go to, you know, move something on it, then it all reverts or something, you know, that way you're just like, oh, God, I don't, you know, ugh. <laughs> you you go to you go to your, my list that's completely fuller house now. It just says, cut it out. Oh, have mercy. Ugh. <laughs> um, I guess uh, before because we might as well, I've I've watched like four episodes of Daredevil. Okay, I'm uh seven or eight in. So, All right, so but before we go to Daredevil, I just got hit on one more thing. Okay, then we'll hit us some Daredevil. Okay. How's that sound? Fair enough. I gotta say, and I don't know if I've talked about it on the show yet, oh, okay. but the best thing going in my life right now, not the best thing, <laughs> but it's it's like up there. <laughs> All right. Is the stupid Starbucks app with their order feature. Okay. Because what I can do is I can I can sit in my car, Brian, and I can order what I want. Mm-hmm. And then I walk into the Starbucks and it's waiting for me. Yeah. You don't have to deal with anybody. You don't have to deal with anybody. And it's there's something that feels great when you like walk in past the line of people waiting in line or waiting for their drinks and their drinks. You feel like Xerxes. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Like coming in on a golden throne. Yeah. (laughs) It's fantastic. (laughs) Well, it makes sense. If you use a Starbucks app, use the order feature if it's available in your area because it's amazing. Well, it makes sense because, you know, uh, how many ever episodes ago, you know, we talked about, you know, the lines and how much people in line at Starbucks irritate you. So, I can I can totally understand. I, you know, I could see why this is beneficial for kind of anywhere. You know, like Chipotle offers something like this to where you can pay for it and order your shit. You can just go right to the front and basically say, hey, pick up and walk right back out. You don't have to yeah. wait in line. And, you know, so just the avoiding the line part is awesome. But also well, even, the like, avoiding the people is awesome. The, yeah, the avoiding people is great. <laughs> like for Dini, she gets the, you know, foo-foo pussy drinks. Yeah. And uh, they're usually too sweet for her. Well, within the app, and I know you can do this in line, but it seems like such a dick move when you're ordering in line. Yeah. But through the app, you can tell them how many pumps of syrup you want. Nice. So you can make it lighter so it's more coffee, less sugar. Yeah. Right? Like I said, for some reason, when you're talking to a person, if you're like, uh, I only want two pumps, then <laughs> it seems like a real dick thing. Right, yeah. But if you're doing it facelessly on the internet, yeah. it just seems fine. Well, sure, yeah, yeah. And then it's, and you can save your recipes. So you just hit that button and oh, it's there. That's convenient. You know? Especially when you're doing, you know, you're, you've got the, uh, I want the X amount of pumps and all this, yeah. Yeah, it's just, oh man. That it's seems like, useful. You feel, 
feel like goddamn royalty. <laughs> right. Like, I, I would love to dress up like a king. And I walk was in. just having that thought. I was just going to say you ought to get a crown and walk in with it. Yeah. Not a Burger be. King crown, though. Although that would be kind of funny. Well, you know, I keep talking about how I want to do a Macho Man for Halloween. That's I true. Just do Macho King. I do like that idea. Just casually, well, not casually. You can't casually stroll in as Macho King. No, not no, at all. Like, I would need someone to go in first and play yeah. the music. Right. It's all about your flourishes <laughs> and every. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what you need is a little square thing with, you know, uh, wheels and go in. You remember that was at WrestleMania or whatever when they all had like the little rings and they, they came like came down oh, to the yeah, ring yeah, in them? The little motorized scooter rings or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's what you need. You know, I you, agree. You know, you can point to people and everything and, oh, man. Awesome. Grab the coffee and roll. <laughs> <laughs> the cream of the crop. <laughs> and you're out. I don't know where they're at. There it is. The cream of the crop. Awesome. Yeah. That would be <laughs> that'd be so great. <laughs> I agree. Uh, just see if anyone really, you know, pays any attention to it, you know. <laughs> don't say anything directly to anyone because, first of all, they're beneath you. And second of all... <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> the the experiment is just about just doing the, you know, just right in and right out. But it's all part of the, you know. <laughs> well, I'd have to, like, grab the coffee and stare at the barista and be like, Ooh, yeah. right. And then leave. <laughs> yeah. You have to do at least one flourish before you pick your coffee up. You know? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, you know, you got to show off. Because be, Macho Man. Right. It'd be like going in in a Ric Flair robe. That, that's what we need to do is get you to dress up in a series of <laughs> different wrestler it'd garb. Have to, it'd have to be the same Starbucks. Yes. So the employees would be like, oh, my God. Right. <laughs> Here comes that wrestler guy. Yeah. <laughs> you just, again, you just don't really say much to anyone. You just go in, do that, and just right out the door. That'd be awesome. I, I, I think that's a fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, so you got, you know, Flair, Macho. Yeah. I mean. Hogan would be awesome to go through and do. Like, you, you, yeah. could, you don't even have to do, like, shirt-tearing Hogan. You could do NWO Hogan where you're just get playing guitar on the belt. Right. To, uh, oh, shoot, what is it? The Hendrix song that he came out to. You know, he has you've had the big boa around oh, your neck. Child. Voodoo Child, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just, you know, play the the belt all the way up, grab your coffee, and just keep playing it right out the door. Right, I, I got the ultimate. No, no, stupid ads. <laughs> God damn you, Netflix. Or YouTube. Yeah, ruined. No, I got I to gotta mush it under my thigh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn advertising uh, not springing for YouTube red. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have the glass break. <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Come strolling in. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so great. Oh man. You know, if you could get someone to do like a smoke machine or dry ice, you could do an Undertaker ramble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, all right, I need you to get in there and find the light switches and turn them all off. Right, right. <laughs> so I come in and raise the lights. Yeah. <laughs> grab the coffee and leave. Yeah. That's exactly it, too. You just raise the lights, grab your coffee, and then right out. Like, what the hell? Just the cane one would be even weirder because you'd be, you know, hitting pyros and then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That might be dangerous. No, no. You just have four guys stand around you like in a square. And when you do the down thing, they all just light lighters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, man. Uh, you can do a Dusty Rhodes one where you come down into your polka dots and dance. <laughs> <laughs> or beat a midnight rider. Uh, man. All right. This is too much fun. Well, this is all going to get filed under. <sighs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, man. How do we not mention Ultimate Warrior when we were doing these? Because that would oh, be that awesome. Would... You just run in. Ding, ding. You got like the duster on. <laughs> just be plowing over displays. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm bouncing off of yeah. shit. Of course. High energy, yeah. man. Grab the coffee right out the door. <laughs> oh, man. Too much. Too much fun. Oh, man. All right. Ooh. These are all fantastic ideas. All right. So 
So let's talk about Daredevil. Yeah, all right. Back to back to reality. <laughs> right. Oh man. Um. So spoilers, just in case. Uh, yeah. We're gonna talk a little bit of Daredevil because you know neither of us has finished it yet. Right. Um. Because I was going to, my goal was to get it done by today, but I ended up playing Diablo way too long the other night and then didn't watch any. So. My goal is to get it done by today, and I failed horribly. Yeah, yeah, just terrible at it. It's like I'm like four or five in. Uh, I'm just at the point where they've uh, <laughs> like not introduced Electra, mm. but the episode after okay. I've watched. Right on. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. it. Okay. I was going to say, I was just going to say, you tell me where you are. That way I can, you know, kind of go frame a reference and I can back up to that point. There you go. So That's I don't at. accidentally give anything away. Although I will say this when, you know, before when I was like, man, they kind of boom right out of the gate from the point you're at. I'll tell you this. The next couple episodes are kind of boring. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. There's a little, there's a little lull there. Um, but yeah, so what'd you think of uh, John Bernthal as the Punisher? I think he's a good Punisher. Really good, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they he really nailed doesn't it. Doesn't take any shit. Which, no. Yeah. I mean, I, I like I, I like uh, what's his name? Uh, um, God damn it! The guy who played Punisher last. Um, uh, something. Jane. Thomas, Thomas Jane. Jane. Yeah. I like that. I like Thomas Jane as a Punisher because he he looks the part. But he's yeah. not as ruthless. Yeah, this like, guy the, really. The Punisher in this is like, nah, he's just brutal. Yeah. This is the this is like the Marvel Max Punisher. Yeah, you know, and that's I, and I really dig that. I, I think they did a great job casting him. Like when they first announced him, I was a little like, oh, okay, like I get it, you know, we'll see. And then it's you know, it's funny though because, and again, <laughs> where I'm at. <sighs> I'm not really spurling anything, but it's like where I'm at, there's still no Punisher skull logo. Right. And it's like, damn it. They're going to make us wait until probably the very end of the dang season. Probably just like they did with the daredevil the, costume. The, yeah. The reveal. Yeah. They're going to make us wait, which is cool. I like, I kind of like it, but at the same time, it's like, dang, you want to see it. I, yeah. That's you really do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I I really dug him. That whole arc I thought was interesting. Um, I'm trying to think. Where is is the is the Punisher arc wrapped up? Where yeah, you're for at? the most part. Um, okay. What's her name? Hot pants. She's like digging into his past. <laughs> Hot pants. I don't yeah. remember her name. Karen. Yeah. Karen. Yeah. <laughs> Hot pants. <laughs> she's uh hey sweet cheeks give me a coffee <laughs> right you have the thing on your face right a nose i know what you mean i'm just fucking with you. um yeah she's like digging into frank castle's past and trying to figure out like oh i gotta dig through all these like all the information's been wiped out i gotta dig through these weird archives yeah what do you what do you think about that like the whole him getting shot in the head thing i think it's interesting I, it might it, it might be try a way of them trying to explain why he's like a sociopath, you know? Yeah, yeah. Although you don't really need it. I mean, from a realistic I mean, standpoint, you know, to have your family killed right in front of you is enough to make you snap. <laughs> yeah, that that was always. I mean, it's a very simple <laughs> yeah. uh, origin story. Yeah, but it's effective for the character. That right, he is. and I think everyone was always like, "Yeah, I could see where you'd go crazy yeah, and want to like, kill oh, a bunch of motherfuckers." Yeah, he's yeah. an ex-Marine. His family gets gunned down by the mob. He starts a war on the mob. Yeah, you, makes sense, right. you know? yeah you go into fight or flight at that point, and yeah. he goes to muscle memory, which is killing people. So, yeah. you know, he goes to his training, and unfortunately, he loses his restraint, essentially. But, yeah, it was uh, – I, I, I thought that was a, kind of an interesting wrinkle that they threw in there um, because, obviously, one of the hard things to do with the Punisher is – Aside from that part of it, it's hard to keep his humanity because when you just keep showing him killing people, eventually you're moving him farther away from humanity. Yeah. Well, and they kind of did an okay job, like, showing he's still got a human side of him with the dog. Right. You know? Or even with that guy when he's, you know, 
when the guy tells him the, you know, or he tells the guy, he's like, your kid's in a box, but you want your money. Yeah. You know, kind of a thing. And it's like, yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, you should be upset about your kid, not the money you lost. But this guy's like more pissed that he lost his money. Right. So, yeah, that's uh, interesting. The You know, and uh, I I was really surprised that they actually straight out named Electra Electra when she showed up, you know, for the first time. Right. You know, they, he actually called her that. I figured they were going to do what they like to do, which is uh, keep people's name really vague. If, she, if it was like, oh, Miss Nachos, or however say her last name. <laughs> I like nachos. <laughs> so do I. Electra Nachos sound delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on down to the Electra Grill. Get a side of Electra Nachos. Nice. Is that kind of like, you know, how they have the uh, women that lay out and they put sushi on them? Is it like we eat nachos off of her? Um. I hope so. I just made a lot of fanboys really happy. <laughs> I just made an open table. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. It, it's really kind of hard to talk about because like other than the Punisher stuff, it's like, there's the little stuff going on, but it's, it's pretty much like that first act is really like boom, boom, boom. And it's over. Yeah. I was kind of surprised how quickly. Yeah. They wrapped up like, and I and I don't know if it's officially wrapped up. Yeah, like I can only assume he's coming back for some. The Punisher's coming back for something else. Yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna. It's not like yeah. a big crazy spoiler here. The next part that that I'm in currently is it's the trial of Frank Castle. Right. You know, so that's the next. I mean, it's kind of the next logical step. You know, he's caught, so you know they have to. Like you know, I mean, I prosecute. obviously I'm not asking, but I I was curious because I, I brought this up to Genia when we were watching it yesterday. Mm. Was how closely they were going to follow the Man of Out Fear story arc, if at all, right? Because they're they're kind of it's you know like if you've read it, it's kind of like you know, hey, she comes back into town and Matt Murdock's like, whoa, there's my bitch, <laughs> and they kind of you know they kind of flash back <laughs> and all that about their press. So it's kind of yeah, following the framework, right? But I just don't foresee Bullseye coming out of nowhere uh, and killing her. See, that's my Spur thing, or... is that, like, I don't want that to happen this season. Right. I want that to be next season. But there's no one, like, they haven't even introduced anybody that could be, as far as I know. Yeah, you know. I'm at, that could be a, a Bullseye-type character. Right. And honestly, you know, I, there there was a lot of rumors that there was an Easter egg in season one. Remember the sniper guy? There, uh, there was one sniper dude that on his bag there was a uh, ace of spades, and the ace of spades is like a calling card of bullseyes. Mm, so right. there were a lot of people that kind of speculated that that's kind of the, um, and they didn't really show the guy; it was kind of in the shadows. But you just see him, you know, as a sniper, and uh, that that's the like a hint that bullseye is to come, basically, which. I, I don't think it's a long stretch to say everyone kind of expects Bullseye at some point because right. Bullseye is a major, you know, villain for Daredevil. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, and like I said, that's, that would be my ideal thing is for them to do this, this season, and then kind of introduce Bullseye either at the end of this or into next season and then continue that. Cause if they go into that storyline, you know, fully, oh man, that's right. You know, that, that just, plays out i mean that you could probably just end the series at three years and just play that storyline out and i think everybody would be like oh my god they did exactly what i hoped they would do yeah you know i mean people would still want more but you know what i mean like for me i'd be like they did the exact story i wanted them to do on the seasons daredevil trilogy perfect yeah yeah you gave me punisher you gave me bullseye you gave me electra and all the you know all and oh and kingpin obviously yeah kingpin Yeah. yeah But, you know, as it is, you figure Kingpin will rear his ugly head down the road again. I would because assume. He always does, you know. Yeah. Although that's one of the things that surprises me is that Kingpin being in jail, there's, like, no ramifications at all from that. Right. Have you noticed that? Like, there's no – like, you'd think even though he went in jail, there'd still be some – Some of his, like, cronies and <sighs> – yeah, it, it's. I, I guess you know, the only ramification is the like the gangs that are that are trying to f- fill up that vacuum now. Mm-hmm. 
you know? Yeah, it, it's it's kind of weird. Because I kind of thought that what would happen, this was me starting the season, I thought, <clears throat> okay, Kingpin's removed, you'd have a lot of gang-on-gang violence as they try to jockey for position. Or you would have, even though Kingpin's in jail, he still controlled things, kind of a thing. Yeah, running from prison situation. Right. And I was like, okay, I like the jockeying for position, because that makes a lot of sense, you know, because they kind of tore down that whole company he was part of, you know. Right. So... I don't know, unless maybe that's kind of what Electra is bringing back to the table with the Roxxon group. Right. You know, that they touch in a little bit, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah. So, so what do you think? You you digging uh, so it? So far, I like. I, I think I like season one better so far. Yeah. Like, but when I, I watched why. the first four, I was like, the way it went, I was like, man, if this whole season's at this pace, this is going to blow away season one. Right, but it's it does kind of slow back down, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, like, I, and I have definitely noticed that with the Electra stuff. Yep, it's kind of like, like okay, I, you they know. pump the brakes when that happens. Yeah, 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 a little bit. Right, you know, and some of the fight stuff is pretty cool. You know, yeah, that one uh, when he fights the biker gang. Yeah, that yeah. was a great sequence. Right, and I yeah. haven't again. I haven't seen all the fights. There was supposedly something that's supposed to make the hallway scene from season one like dwarf it. So. We'll see. I haven't, you know. I know everyone loved that hallway fight from season one. Yeah. But, it, I mean, I know we said this on the show, too, when we talked Daredevil originally, but it was so much like the fight from it Old was. Boy. Yeah, you're so right. That I just, I couldn't, I had a hard time with it, just because that's all it reminded yeah, me of was that fight. Yeah. I And I totally understand that, because I looked up, after you said it, I looked it up, because I wasn't real familiar with it. I looked it up, and I was like, wow, you're you're not really wrong. There was a lot of similarities in that, so. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. The The fight sequences are, are really cool. I love how, how much he uses his cane, and, like, when he, um, you know, he uses them as the, um, uh, what do you call them, like, batons. Right. But even when he's, like, Matt Murdock a couple of the times, like, when he's going around, you'll see him, like, shorten his cane, and he throws it as his baton, and, and it'll hit someone, and he's using the ricochets and whatnot, and then he'll catch it and then extend it back out into his full, uh, his which blind cool. man cane, which is awesome. Yeah. I, nice little Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. Touch. I just, I, I really enjoy some of that stuff. There are little, yeah. little tidbits in there, so, yeah. All right. I, mean, I, I really like what Marvel's doing on Netflix. Mm-hmm. You know, their whole, they're building a nice little sub-universe there. Yeah, definitely. Which is nice. Yeah, me too. And and this is really good, because Daredevil is, you know, it's always been a book where I'm, I've always had kind of a love-hate with it, you know? Like, there's certain times where I'm like, man, this is such a good book. Like, you know, the Miller stuff with, you know, is, I hold in such high regard. And I dug a lot of the Bendis stuff, and, and some of the Mark Wade stuff was good. And, you know, there, if Fraction, I think, had a good run. Brubaker had a great run on it. But then there's a lot of the in-between stuff that I'm like, Ugh, this is just not good. Right. You know? And um, so it was always one of those characters where it was a, you know, it was on and off my pull list for years, you know? And for a long time, I would just buy trades of it. You know, like if someone's like, dude, you got to read this, I just go by the trade instead because I I just didn't want to keep buying the individual issues. So, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, all right. Well, you got anything else on Daredevil? Negative. All right. Well, let's do a quick break here and uh, then we'll come back in a couple of minutes. All right. All right. All right. All right. Ooh, we're going to come back with a song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one that is in my brain, and I might. No, I probably won't because I have children in a professional life, but I really want to cut up in the ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, hopefully, you'll enjoy that, and we'll talk about it when we come back. Hey there, fuckers. We're back. Yeah. Um. So, the song that I'm going to be playing in just shortly, I. A podcast let's do Legion of Skanks, Big J Oakerson, great right. podcast. Right. Uh they're doing a battle of the bands, right? And they played this song by this band called Judge Mongo. Okay. Right? And a song, it's not very long. They only played thirty seconds of it, but that's all it took to for me to go like I need to find her as a song, so I want to listen to it again. Okay. And and then I the I listened to it a couple times. I'm like, I need to have Brian listen to this song. Okay. Right? And it's I just looked at it. It's like a minute 17 or something. Okay. 
So Judge Mongo coming at you. I'm not even going to tell the song title. Okay, fair enough. No spurlers. All right, completely in the dark. Fair enough. All right. Completely in the dark. All right, ready? Yep. All right, here we go. That's right. That was Thunder Cunt. Wow. <laughs> wow. That that was something, all right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I heard it, I'm like, did they just say Thunder Cunt? <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I thought he said Tender Cunt first. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, no, he said Thunder Cunt. <laughs> It's just repeated several times. <laughs> Thunder Gun! Thunder Gun! You know, my favorite part is the whole, like, trying to decide whether the, like, I love the, um, the kind of thing. And then the, the guitars, it was like, you know, like they're sitting around trying to decide what kind of band they want to be. And somebody's like, I really want to have a dance beat. And they were like, yeah, but we got these driving guitars. <laughs> what? They don't. They don't have many tracks on SoundCloud. Yeah, because I did check out a couple other ones, mm. and I think they're more of a like electronic housey kind of band. Yeah, but all their songs are goofy. <laughs> like they have one that's just called "I Am a Vagina," <laughs> and that's the lyrics. It's like "I Am a Vagina." <laughs> wow, that is that is the exact kind of songs that uh, you know we we love to spotlight here on the Salty Language Program. But I, I, for some reason, I thoroughly enjoy Thunder Cunt. Yeah. That's... And I don't know why. <laughs> that is something, all right. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Um, do me a favor. Make sure you send me the uh, the info on that so that I can. Oh, I absolutely will. Yeah. Well, because, you know, we've got to properly credit it and send yeah, it out for you. got to give Judge Mongo the credit they right, deserve. Right, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure everyone will be hitting them up. Much like, you know, everyone loved the, uh, oh man, I can't even think now. Wow, I blanked on our, the song we used to end the show with all the time. Oh, uh, um, Whitehaven Drinking Song. Thank you. I, I, From uh, Nate Monoxide. Thank you. Wow, dude, I blanked on the whole thing. Wow. And I feel bad about that because that, that was, was an awesome tune. track. There's, occasionally, Jeannie still gives me shit about that. Like, why don't you guys close that song anymore? Oh, I, know. I really like it's that so song. It's so good. I know. I love that song. I actually, I never took it out of my iTunes. Like, I downloaded <laughs> it for the show. Right. And, uh, you know, and I actually have two versions of it in my iTunes. I have the regular version, and then I have a dance remix version. Um, you should uh, throw one of them at the end of this show. I, I don't have it. On oh, the, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, I Damn wonder, it. I I probably, once you buy something on iTunes, you should be able to download it again, though, right? Yeah, you should be able to just get it from the cloud or whatever. Yeah, okay. Maybe I'll I'll do that, and if I can, I'll throw it in there, because it was so good. Yeah. Um, oh, man. And it was cool, because, you know, Nate Monoxide, uh, you know, we mentioned him in the thing, you know, to give him credit, and he was like, you know, thanks for, you know, uh, bringing attention to it, basically. So it was awesome to to do that, too. That was right. so great. Yeah, if you if you're not familiar with the if in the event that I can't put it on there, check out Nate Monoxide White Haven Drinking Song. Or wait, White Haven, right? Yeah, White okay. Haven Drinking Song. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll uh if I'm if I'll, I'll write it down to it. I'll see if it's on YouTube. I'll put a link at least on our show our yeah. show notes stories things. Right, right. Yeah. Oh man. 
Yeah, I know. And that's the thing is it's like we'd have to, you know, we'd have to clear it with him and everything before we could just throw it at the end of every show. So, yeah, because we don't own own the rights and all that stuff. So, no, unfortunately not. Yeah. What was a nice? It was a great tune. Yeah. That that was back when we were just playing music willy nilly. <laughs> right. Like if you want to go back and listen to like the first probably 40 to 50 episodes of our show. There's every there's so much random tune. It might actually be more than that because it's Tate in the middle was, more so. Yeah, because it was more yeah. so when Tate was part of the oh, yeah, show. That's right. Because uh, uh, Dave, our buddy Dave, wrote our original theme song. Mm-hmm. And then in and the then middle, Tate was picking kind of a Tate, like the opening and the break music. Yep. So. And then yeah, and then we're like, yeah, we got to stop stealing music. <laughs> yeah, we realized that what we were doing was no bueno, so we put an end to that. Although this threw me off because, okay. you know, I, I, I was just telling you during the break, I've been using the SoundCloud app a little more because yeah. it's kind of fun to just throw up, you know, random rock or whatever to see what people are playing. Mm-hmm. So this morning I'm like, well, let me see what's trending in the uh, the metal category. Right. Because, you know, rear, rear, metal. Me- oh, right. And the number one song and it was released by the band was a remastered version of Creeping Death, released by Metallica on SoundCloud. Really? Right? Hmm. That's, that's Isn't that really... odd? Yeah, yeah. Considering the Napster stink oh, of however many years ago that yeah. was already? No doubt. Wow. I mean, I and I completely understand Napster stink. I get it. Yeah. But what are you doing just dropping tracks on SoundCloud? <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure they're not free to download, but it's still... I, you know what? Because you can download from SoundCloud. I should some check things, it out. Some things, not everything. Yeah, some things yeah. you can. I'm, 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 because I'm when I, look. yeah, because when I lost our um, intro song by Heno, you know, Heno has stuff uh, under Monkey Tongue Productions. If you're, you know, if you'd like to check out our pal Heno stuff, how if you hear him or yeah, um, um, uh, his stuff was not available for download. You know, the artist chooses whether it is or isn't. So, um, yeah. That's really funny though that they did that. So, huh. yeah, it really threw me off when I'm like, "Why? What?" It's understandable that that's the number one listened to song though because it's Metallica, but it's still kind of funny that you know they put it up there. Huh. Oh, I see what they're doing. They putting the whole album up or something? No, 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 no. They're putting like, like they've got um, "Kill 'Em All" remastered, but they only have three tracks on it. Oh, right on. That way you, know? you can't get the whole album that way. Okay. Right. Let's see here. So I'm going to do, Fair I'm going to click on Four Horsemen. Hopefully it doesn't start playing. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's because I have Flash Blocker enabled. Okay. Mm. Well, that's fine. We I, don't need Metallica coming after us. <laughs> I just want to know if it, it, you know, I'm trying to see if you can actually download it. Oh, nope. There's a buy link. Yeah. Ha. Huh. There yeah. you go. I've seen that with some bands where they have buy links. Some of them have downloads and then some just have nothing. Underneath Although, it. I mean, I guess if you're a Metallica fan, because I'm scrolling through the tracks they have on here, yeah. they've got a lot of live tracks. Oh, really? Which, yeah, and it tells you, like, you know, hey, this was in Norway, this was in Chicago, this was in Sweden. That's, I was like, eh, hey, that's kind of cool. That's all right, yeah. Fair enough. Like, if you want to hear Seek and Destroy live from Moscow. Mm-hmm. And who doesn't? Right? Yeah. Right. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, fair enough. But, yeah, I, I've been enjoying the shit out of SoundCloud the past... Well, ever since I started listening to Judge Mongo. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it's funny because I, I used to use SoundCloud a lot, and it got, like, for a while there, it got really, like, really awful, honestly. It, it was terrible. Like, the app sucked. The website wasn't good. And then I heard that they, you know, really put some time and effort into making it better. So I'm glad to see that it's you know, that they straightened it out because it, it was really weird. Like, I, I used to upload our show up you know on on their site and stuff and then after a while it got really hard to figure out how to do it because they kept moving the buttons around and they weren't there you had to like scroll over an area and then they would show up and stuff and you know it was so that they, it had a clean interface and i was like this is stupid right like may if you want a clean interface make it a clean interface for people listening but when i'm the person uploading things i want yeah. all the tools to show up i want my shit yeah and uh, so, I don't know, but it, it, I, I, it looks better now. The app is, I mean, I hate to, I hate to say the word 
beautiful, but the app looks beautiful mm, when you're playing enough. music. Yeah. Because, you know, I got this fucking television I strapped to my hip or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, it fills up the whole screen. Unless, obviously, unless the phone's locked. Yeah. But when it's open, it fills up the whole screen of the album art. It just looks, it's just nice and oh, vibrant cool. or yeah. colored. Nothing wrong it looks with that. nice. Yeah. It's not like, you know, like Pandora, you know, you get that little like postage stamp of album art. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Check it out, guys. Yeah. Check it out. Do it or don't, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. All right. At least so. go listen to Thundercon about 40 times. <laughs> right. I don't know. Name on Oxide might even be on there. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's, you know what? That's an excellent call. Yeah. I, I don't know. I still have it going here, Brian. I should so check it out. Why don't you have a look, see? While you're doing that, I'm going to just randomly uh, talk about something else that I wanted to talk about. We'll bring it on. Did you see that AMC finally announced the debut date for Preacher? No, I did not see that. I should say AMC did. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, shoot. I had it right here, and it, the page refreshed. Darn it. I believe, uh, there it is. May 22nd. May 22nd, huh? May 22nd. Yep, yeah, and it looks like it's, uh, I can't remember if it was 9 or 10 o'clock, but, um, yep, May 22nd, we finally get to have a look at uh, oh. Preacher. Uh, Eight Monoxide is indeed on SoundCloud. There you go. And you can check out his album he has on here, Heard Not Seen, track number four, White Haven Drinking Song. There you go. Yep. Nice. Nice. So there you go. uh, See? So while you're on there checking out Thundercom, boom, right over to Nate Monoxide on the same site even. You don't even have to do anything I'm going to log in real quick because I'm logged in on my phone, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to follow him. Yeah. Because that's what fucking dudes do for each other. Just trust me, though. You want to just buy the song because it's an awesome song. (laughs) It is, yeah. Um, So, uh, yeah. So anyway, May 22nd. Preacher finally hits. I heard that they screened it at, um, ah, shoot, I forgot what Comic Con it was, and that it got, that people seemed to really like it. So, well, that's good. That's good. I'm excited for it. So, as far as, you know, the fact that it's a Preacher TV show, you know, we'll see. They, they've got new promo picks up of, you know, like Arf, Arf's face drinking a uh, shake and, you know, there's like a new 20 second trailer, but it's, you know, it just basically just shows everybody. It's not really anything too exciting. Nothing like, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't show Jesse Custer of red eyes doing shit, does it? No. God I, damn it. Well, think about it this way. I guess in fairness, they want to hold that as long as they can. Yeah, but that's you all know? I want to see. I know, but that's, you know what I mean? That's the cum shot of the first episode. That's, I know. <laughs> but, I mean, it know, really is, yeah. Who doesn't skip right to the cum shot? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, so, yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Um, You know, because Walking Dead will be over by, well, Walking Dead ends this coming Sunday. So, well, two days from the, our, we're recording this. Right. On the same night as... You know, a big event, which is Tony and I finally doing another enthusiast. And, of course, you know, WrestleMania. So. Oh, yeah. All you, in the you same know what I've been enjoying the shit out of? No. No gas? No. no uh, better Call Saul. You know, I'm, I'm like four weeks behind on. I love the show. I just, it, it was funny. Someone mentioned to me about Walking Dead and they were like, oh, have you seen the new Walking Dead? And I was like, I'm like a month behind. I don't know how I just all of a sudden just didn't bother watching and same with better call Saul. Cause I would watch, you know, they're on the same night, you know? Right. And I was like, Oh my God, I got to catch up on those. So I'm, I'm one behind on walking dead, which I need to catch up on because that show is going to be like potential for spurlers, like crazy, you know, for the finale and right. better call Saul. I'm not as quick to catch up on because nobody spoils that show. Does it, does it say something about the people that watch the shows, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Heno and I were talking a little bit about it. I was like, I, it's one of the things I like about the show, though, is it's one of those shows you can watch that no one seems to spoil. You know? Hmm. That's interesting. Like, Walking Dead is this Sunday. It's the, the finale. It's a 90-minute finale. There's a there's going to be a big character reveal, and there's probably going to be, like, everybody dying and, you know, whatever. But in the Internet's going to just be just all over itself on this, and WrestleMania will be going on. And people will be watching that live, and they'll be talking about it like crazy. 
So I pretty much won't be allowed anywhere near the internet on Sunday night until I can watch whatever it is I want to watch. Um, you know, so, but better call Saul. I doubt anyone's going to be like, Oh my God, better call Saul. This happened because I don't know what could happen that you can really spoil on that show. He dresses up like Ric Flair. (laughs) Goes into Starbucks. Yeah. Right. You see what I mean though? It's like, I don't know that you can spoil that show. Yeah. It's yeah, kind of right. something nice about it is it's a show you can't fully spoil because we know the main characters won't die because they're in uh, Breaking yeah, Bad. Breaking Bad. You know, I mean, save for maybe his brother, because I don't think his brother was in Breaking Bad. Not that I remember. But other than yeah. that, you know what I mean? It's like it'd be tough for them to really do a whole lot like that. So I kind of it's kind of refreshing. I mean, we like we like plowed through season one yeah because we watched a couple episodes of it and you know i'm about current i don't think i watched it last week's yet yeah but god damn what a great show it is. is it's a great show absolutely uh what's his name uh odenkirk and um dave mckean are comedians but they're so good in the dramatic yeah. parts of that show you know absolutely and i love seeing the guy who uh plays mike on that show i love oh, seeing yeah. more of him because i dug him on breaking bad yeah, for sure. You know, it's nice to see him get, you know, a little more character work. So, I, yeah, I dig that show a whole lot. But it is nice that I don't have to, like, avoid the internet because of Better Call Saul. It, it's just kind of nice to have one show that I really enjoy that I don't have to worry about, you know. Spurlers. Yeah. You know, because even if someone goes, hey, did you see Jimmy, you know, actually become Saul in this episode? I'll be like, well, yeah, that was going to happen. You know, <laughs> like, we already know he's... You know, at some point he takes on the persona of Saul Goodman, you know. It's true. Exactly. You can't really it's ruin true. that part of it. So I want to I wanna make a show. Okay. Called Better Call Cliff. Okay. And it's about what happened before Cliff Clavin was Cliff Clavin. <laughs> like he gets a traumatic brain injury and becomes Cliff Clavin? Yeah, Cliff exactly. Clavin? Jeez, I can't Or maybe he was actually like a like a hitman or something. And he had to go in witness protection. Oh, that'd be awesome. And the whole time he's just he's just playing that he's a, a buffoon. Yeah. A but he's just really like a high-level. post office worker. Right. But before that, he was like a high-functioning like uh, sniper or an assassin. Like super smart type of guy. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I like this yeah. idea. Better call Cliff. <laughs> I'm in. I like yeah, this I idea. Do. <laughs> That's all I can really do. <laughs> we can actually show where he first meets Norm, you know, toward the end of the run, of course, you know, because oh, yeah. as he's, you know, first developing the persona. <laughs> it's perfect. That mustache, fake. Fake. <laughs> Doesn't even actually work for the post yep. office. Glues it on every morning, just hangs out in the bar all day. Yeah, yeah. Pretending he works for a post office. Right, exactly. <laughs> that'd be something. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Oh, man, that'd be so good. If they, you know, later on in the uh, Cheers run, if that came out, Cliff was actually just in the witness uh, relocation program and, you know, didn't actually work for the post office. It was all just a clever ruse. Uh, it gets revealed when someone comes in to rob Cheers. And Cliff, like, handily executes him. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like a uh, history of violence moment. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because they're just going around. Cliff's standing there with his hands shaky, and the guy, like, puts the gun right to his face, and Cliff just all of a sudden just, you know, boom, and just goes into it, and, you know, next thing he knows. He disarms him and shows a pint glass into his neck or (laughs) something. (laughs) And then just sits, casually sits back down, and everyone's just staring at him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he grabs Carla just like she just gives her the biggest sloppiest kiss you know <laughs> slaps her on the ass you know <laughs> and Cheers was never the same again that's the final episode of Cheers <laughs> it's the lost that final episode lost episode <laughs> oh man that'd be yeah, awesome if it's just Sam trying to clean the blood off the bar <laughs> It's just the final shot is just Woody mopping the blood on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the lights are off and yeah. the stools are up on the tables. Yeah. <laughs> Sam's just behind the bar just drinking a, a tonic water or whatever, you know, 
or a club no, he's, soda. He's drinking shots. But yeah, you're right because he yeah. he just can't handle it anymore. Can't handle can't. it. Shaky hand shots. <laughs> Boy, yeah. he's too dumb to know any better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh man. Uh yeah, all right. We sh- I think we should fast track this. Yeah. Yeah. Right into the Ah uh, horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right in that file. <laughs> right. Oh man. So while we're on TV shows, did you see yeah. the it came out or it was uh mentioned by um the creator of the tick that Amazon's revival of it's gonna be darker and more grounded? Really? Yeah. So is it going to be more like the comics were? Because those are kind of darker. Or all of the comics were really absurd. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's more grounded, I don't know about I want my absurd. Like, I could go for with a darker comedic tick. That'd be fine. But here's the thing. Like, the whole comic book world for the longest time there was all like, oh, we got to make it dark and gritty and real. And Marvel was like, maybe we don't. Maybe right. we make it a little more dark and gritty and real, but we still make it kind of fun and funny. And then maybe we're also going to put out Galaxy or uh, ga- uh, gar- yeah, bleh, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy, which is just fun, right? And Marvel's like, and look at us just swimming. We're just just yeah, rubbing, yeah. We're just rubbing money all over ourselves in ungodly manners, you know? Yes, I and, would too. Yeah, exactly. Straight up ball baths with money. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it says on here that they were like, that the tick is kind of done like dark or done like irreverent before. So this was, you know, they kind of wanted to go a different way. But I, and I guess because like the TV show that was on before was like really absurd. Yes. You know, so I, I guess, but I, I don't know, man. Like I kind of like my tick like that. But the tick's. Supposed to, I mean, I the TV show with uh, what's his name, uh, Patrick Warburton. Yeah, thank you, Patrick Warburton. It was a silly, silly show. Oh, yeah, for sure. It was sillier than Camelot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a silly place. It's a silly place. Yeah, but um, I, I, I mean, if they want to do darker, whatever, but I, I they need to keep the comedy. Yeah, because I mean, like, like I said, the, the comics, the original, like, first old school ticks, you know, the bigger books, whatever the fuck those are called, magazine style format. Right. Was like, it was funny, but it was definitely adult. Oh, for sure. And maybe you know? that's what they shoot for. And if so, I can live with that, you know? Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. I just don't want it to, I just don't want them to try to aim for like, um, oh, jeez, I can't think of his name now. Christopher Nolan level dark. You know, I don't right. want that. I, I I think that kind of became the benchmark, and I don't think that needs to be the benchmark for everything, you know? Yeah, like, I don't need to, the tick standing up on a rooftop in the rain, you know? Well, depending on what he says or what happens next, I mean, it could be a funny scene. Oh, true. But I'm not talking about a funny scene. Right, yeah. Like, a sh- really shitty rainstorm. Right, yeah. Like, yeah, he's just standing up there. I am the darkness. I am the night. <laughs> yes, I am the... <laughs> Tick? I am Darkwing. No, no. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Darkwing. Du- Have you seen that by chance? The like fan made thing that's like a dark Darkwing Duck. No, I have. Oh not. my god, you need to look it up. You should for sure put that in the link. Okay, I'll write it down to find. It was like a fan made thing where it's like they took Darkwing Duck and there's no like it's not silly at all. It's treated more like it's Batman the animated series. That's awesome. Yeah. I would watch that. Yeah. And when they, uh, when I watched it, I was like, I bet a lot of people would, well, I mean, even if they put a goofy one on, people would watch it. But it, you know, yeah. When I saw that, I was like, I think people would actually watch this series because that was kind of what it was spoofing was Batman, you know, right. obviously. But yeah. Anyway. So we need a darker Darkwing Duck, uh-huh. a less darker tick. Right. And a darker Quackula. <laughs> and a less dark Blackula. Yeah. <laughs> no? No, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, you're probably right. We need a darker Blackula. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> can Blackula get darker? Oh, wait, he certainly can. 
like the Kambi Mutombo. <laughs> oh god, that'd be a terrible Blackula. <laughs> that wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they pull out like a steak or garlic, and he's like, mm, and just wagging his finger. Oh, this is well, the worst movie. Got, like the big Nosferatu fingers. True. Oh, this is the worst movie ever, though. It's pretty bad. It's terrible. <laughs> the <Kembe Mutombo> is <laughs> Blackula. This one goes right into the file. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think that belongs in a horseshit file. No, no, I'm done. No, I'm done. I, mean, with I don't this. know if I have a file for that. Oh, I do. All right, let me, sad trombone file. Let me ask you a quick question here. We don't have What's to spend that? much time on this because you know we're kind of we probably getting... will, but okay. No, no, that's fine. All right. What are the odds you go see Batman versus Superman? Um, probably not great. Yeah, my same here. I mean, if like if for some reason tomorrow morning we woke up and the kids were like, "Hey, we really want to see the movie," we might go. Yeah. But I mean, like, if it was like a genie and I date night, yeah, probably not. Right. That's kind of what I'm thinking too. I, I don't. I don't feel the urge. Yeah, and although, like, the Jisk and the Risk went and saw it last weekend, and uh-huh. they said that they liked it. Yeah. But but they told me that I would probably get more out of it because I know more about the you know the comic book universe. I've heard a few people like Heno kind of mentioned that to me too. So. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. I yeah, just, uh, I was just kind of curious. Out on DVD, I'll for sure watch it. Yeah, same here. I was just kind of curious because you and I hadn't really talked much about it, especially recently with the reviews and all that kind of. It's making boatloads of money, though. Right. Like it, it's like hand over fist taking in money, and the reviews have not been good. And it's weird though. Like a lot of the comic comic book fans, people like as I'm reading and stuff, it just it feels like it's falling short with those people too. <laughs> I pull up those people like I'm a heel in pro wrestling. Right. Uh, or no, that'd be a you people. Sorry. I um, I do like, though, because the, the one good thing that's come out of this whole thing mm-hmm. is the uh, sad Ben Affleck meme. Yeah, that's been pretty good. I'm kind good. of a fan of that. <laughs> yeah. I've heard a lot of people say they were really impressed by Wonder Woman. Right. That she was awesome, which doesn't surprise me because I think I said – I don't remember if I said on the show or not, but I – made a comment I know at one point that from the trailer that is one of the things I was most excited about was she looks and acts the part real well yeah so if that's what and we've already seen the first kind of footage from you know Wonder Woman kind of standalone and it looked pretty sweet so right yeah so yeah yeah I don't know I'm just not feeling it yeah I'm the same way I I'm think I'm with you it's it, you know because there's no like you know there used to be like a, the dollar theaters and or the real cheap theaters and those don't exist around here so it's like now plus stuff goes to dvd so fast like deadpool's gonna be on dvd next month that's pretty wild yeah i know star wars comes out this weekend doesn't it like sunday I yeah think, or uh, yeah it's available it's digital i think now i think yeah. yeah so you know it's pretty stuff's just blowing out on the you know uh available so fast that it's like oh yeah okay i don't feel like seeing it i'll just wait a couple months and it'll be out right yeah so here's something that i think should go right into the horseshit file and i don't seem to be alone from the people i've been off and on talking with about it and i want your opinion on it all right in uh justice league number 50 which is uh coming out may 25th okay dc has announced that they're going to reveal the joker's true identity Yeah. Goddamn rich cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I am in in part of this comes from um they have a thing an event going on called Dar- the Dark Side War where Dark Side right. dies and he has individual powers of his go to each of like the Justice League members and basically Batman gets to sit in the Mobius chair which grants him like all the knowledge. Okay? So to test the chair, he asks the chair, like, who killed my parents? And then right. he also asks, I guess, in an upcoming one or whatever, who is the Joker? What's the Joker's true name? I'm reading right from the uh, panel. And it doesn't show in the panel, obviously, who the Joker is. But um, from what I understand, Jeff Johns uh, says that you know, it'll be someone that, you know, nobody will guess that there's no real hints out there for it. 
Um, but I just really feel like they should leave this in the just vague. Leave this vague. I agree completely. There's everybody's got their theory. It allows everyone to kind of write the their story. You know, I kind of feel like you remember when they put out Wolverine Origin. You know, when yeah. they finally revealed, and it was a cool story. Everybody seemed to like it well enough, but it just seemed to take a little something away from Wolverine. Yeah, I kind of like just like, oh, he was a military medical experiment. Yeah. That's and, his origin. Right. But now it's like, oh, he was this. And it's like, oh, okay. Oh, he was a, a sickly cowboy kid. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, he doesn't seem like as much of a badass now. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like, oh, here's some tussin. Sissy. <laughs> Some tussing. <laughs> yeah. I, so anyway, so pretty much everyone I've talked to about this seems to be pretty much on the horseshit bandwagon on it. Who got a... I mean, obviously I'm going to read it because I want to see who they pick, but... Right. Uh, man, I just don't like it. Who got dark sides like crazy Omega eyes that vaporize people? I don't think... It, well, it didn't quite work like that. It was... Uh, um. Basically, what happened was each of the Justice League members got a power that is essentially th- what they are best at. Like, Batman got the knowledge thing. Cause, oh, right? I see. Okay. Superman became, like, a living weapon, essentially. He got, like, ultimate power. The speed – or, yeah, the speed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the speed. The speed. <laughs> you know, the fast guy. guy. The speed. The it's like the Mexican toy counterpart. Yeah. The Flash got um I think the Flash became like death. Um because you can't outrun it. See the uh, oh, eh. um, I meant like D F. Like he Oh got, yeah. Right. He got a bunch of street cred. Yeah, like he's most deaf, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he's part of you know, he just does rap stuff now. Um Yeah, I, I can't remember the other ones, but it, it it's oh. been an interesting <laughs> read. Did but, Green Lantern get uh, Dark Side's swing in Apocalypse Dick? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> no, Wonder Woman got it, oddly enough. That's weird. Oh, that's weird. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah ooh. Um, I can't remember who the what Green Lantern got. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, it's... Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, I was just curious what your opinion on that was. Yeah, As I don't a, like that. Yeah. Most I'm, people I'm don't seem way. to be. Like, the Joker is the Joker. Yep. Leave it at that. I don't want to know that he was like Cliff Glavin. <laughs> right. Right. Now, see, Which this is the exact sick. kind of stuff that it was like, you know, when they took away like the Elseworlds label, this is the kind of story I want them to tell like in an Elseworlds storyline. You know? Right. Like if you want to tell this and then tell us, hey, this may or may not be the truth or in main, you know, in actual continuity and kind of leave it vague out there. So we're kind of like, and maybe through the years they can kind of re- go back and, you know, over time kind of pinpoint that this is the truth. I, I have less problem with that. I just don't like nailing this completely down because it makes it, I don't know. I, I just like that. The Joker just needs to be a being of chaos. I just like the, like you said, the uncertainty, you know? Yeah. Did it properly answer Batman when it said, uh, who killed my parents? Did, did it, it go, you did, Bruce? Oh. Because you want to see that stupid damn. movie. Damn. Yeah, it's what it should have said. Yeah. It's what it should have no said. No one likes Zorro, Bruce. How it, dare you? It should have said, you know, classism brought brought around because of, of your parents' uh, greediness. That's what it should have said. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> The no. chair mic drop does the old <laughs> mic drop. Right. No, it actually said Joe Chill, which is correct. Yeah. Because, you know, much like I said when we were supposed to do that um, Batman party where we were supposed to be heroes, or, you know, Batman, and then everyone else was supposed to be villains. And I was like, man, I need to go as Joe Chill. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> the ultimate Batman villain. Well, not really a villain. I mean, you know, he created Batman, I guess. Creator. But... I want yeah. to see a whole run of uh, Batman taking the Mobius chair on Jeopardy. <laughs> Just dominating. <laughs> that would be really funny. Just Batman <laughs> in the Mobius chair. Just, you know, just doing all sorts of, you know, all sorts of uh Stuff like that where he's just like, no, actually, that's just what I wanted Batman to become is just that nerd who always has to say actually and then correct everybody, (laughs) you know? (laughs) (laughs) 
what you meant to say yeah. was uh, uh, bat nerd. He's just correcting everyone's grammar. And <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hates him. Yeah. He's got his big dopey chair. Right. Um, it's, actually, it's actually an electric wheelchair because his spine's all crooked. <laughs> <laughs> He's got scoliosis. What? Stupid bat nerd. Oh, man. Poor guy. Um, Shoot, I had something else. Wow, I can't spell. Jesus. All right. I need the Mobius chair for my own good. Fair enough. So as I was looking up, you know, just kind of seeing what was going on in, like, the geek world and whatnot today, I saw comicbook.com had a headline that said Scarlett Johansson robot built by fan. <laughs> That's wait, is it's April Fools? Yeah, exactly. Is this a legit story? I don't know. That was the first thing I thought. Or is it robot just her like face taped to a pillow? <sighs> well, first of all, it doesn't I, I'll be honest, I don't think it really looks like her that much. All right, I got to look this thing up. Yeah. But it, it, this, and again, take this with a grain of salt because it is, you know, April Fool's Day. The rest of these things had, uh, were published before April Fool's Day. This one, I believe, was listed today. Right. So this one, who knows? And I look through the comments, but the comments all say, you know, just dumb internet stuff. But it says that the guy, <laughs> the guy spent fifty thousand dollars to build this Mark One prototype, and it took about a year and a half to build it. Says he won't officially re- uh, officially reveal who the robot's modeled after, but it has an eerie resemblance to Johansson, which, I, again, I don't really think it does. But, you know, maybe it's just me. Like, it might kind of have this or that that, you know. But it was funny because it's like, oh, who doesn't want a robot type of thing? It's like, yeah, you made a robot woman. Like, he's com- trying to compare it to wanting a Transformer when you were a kid and stuff. You know. Right. And it's like, no, you you made a woman that's a robot that's a woman, though. So, I mean, I think it'd be pretty obvious what you're wanting to do with it. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's for it being not a person. It, the face looks pretty good. But, yeah. You know, I pulled up just Scarlett Johansson robot images. Yeah. When you have images of the robot next to images of actual Scar Joe. Yeah. It's really just a big pile of garbage. Yeah, it doesn't really look like her. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I just laughed at this. I just wanted to bring it up because it made me laugh. <laughs> what a mutant. Oh, my God. He really <laughs> fucked up on the hands. Oh, Looked I like didn't even 80 see. 80-year-old lady hands. Oh, I didn't even see the hands. I There's a video, but I just didn't click on it. Cause... They're not good. They look like they should be, like, handing out, like, you know, Hard candies out of uh, some sort of crystal bowl. Right, right. Or hand jobs. Right. Oh, God. Awful hand jobs. Or, or they should be knuckling your buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What is up with people? Even if I had the technology, I don't think I would take it in this direction. Eh, don't lie. You would too. Like, like if I had the resources, like, I'm going to build a ScarJo bot. No. Maybe. I think I'd build a Cliff Clavin bot. <laughs> that was a that's, deadly assassin. And that's when Skynet takes over. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that would be it, too. That'd be my luck, is I would build the Scarlett Johansson bot, and she would take over. Like she, That would be where Skynet takes over. She'd refuse me, of course, and then oh, yeah. take over as Skynet. So not only did I get refused by you know, the Scarlett Johansson bot, but then also, I was the downfall of humanity. <laughs> I was just picturing a naked Cliff, Cliff Clavin going back in time to kill Sarah Connor. Is that part All of our show? Terminators sh- are modeled after him. No, is that part of our show? Or <laughs> maybe? I don't know. Ugh. It could be the sci fi spinoff. Ugh. Cliff Clavin is the Terminator. Uh, no. Hey, you. <laughs> That's the worst. It's like if Sylvester Stallone and Cliff Clavin had a baby. Right. <laughs> and it was and it had some mild defects. <laughs> hey, I'm looking for a Sierra Cutter. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. <laughs> all right. All right, you got anything for the else for the week? <laughs> no, I think I'm about spent. That's all I got. Oh man. Uh all right. Well, 
I have one one uh, quick, and I kind of mentioned this once before, but I don't want to bring up a shut up and take my money. Ooh, you got a drop for me, sir? Because I know you mean the, like shut up and take my money. Yeah, because the kids were like, "Oh, I've been waiting for this." So you remember not all that long ago, but a while ago, I mentioned that the Iron Giant's going to be heading back to theaters, and yeah. the, then it's going to make its triumphant de- debut on Blu-ray, right? Right. It need oh, never mind. Yeah. Right. Well. It's going to be in September that it's going to be in the theaters, or in August. I can't remember. And it, or no, it said last September. I'm sorry, it returned to theaters. I don't even remember that getting announced. Like actually, it, like seeing it in the theaters. But it, it was one weekend. Oh, that's why. Because Jeannie and I were like, we should take the kids, and it just didn't work. Ugh, because sorry. it was like one weekend, and the theaters had like one showing. Of oh, it. that's why they suck. Okay. Well, yeah. anyway, moving forward. So anyway, um, Warner Brothers has now confirmed a Blu-ray release for this fall, as well as an Ultimate Collector's Edition, which this is the shut up and take my money part of it. Shut up and take my money. That includes a few extra goodies. Now, it's seventy four ninety nine, so it's a little, you know, much like most of these, you know, things mm-hmm. that cost more than I'd like them to. You get the signature cut of the uh, original theatrical release, both in high and standard def. There's also a documentary on the disc called The Giant's Dream, which gives a definitive look at how the classic was put together. That's cool. Uh, Dig deeper into the packaging. You'll uncover some Mondo art cards. A hardcover. Huh? That's actually my pickup line. Yeah, Mondo art cards. Dig deeper into the packaging. (laughs) Fashionable? Fashionable, yet aggressive. (laughs) You know, I actually think that we just came up with the essence of Dev Tagline. Fashionable, yet aggressive? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Oh, hello there. His kimono. Fashionable. Yet aggressive. You're right? Yeah, anyway. Um, Big Dev. <laughs> it's like, Dev, 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 Dev. <laughs> it's got to be the kimonos. Uh, um, so anyways, it comes with Mondo art cards, a hardcover art book, a four-inch statue of the giant himself, and a letter from director Brad Bird. Both the regular yeah, regular signature edition, which includes the documentary, as well as the new and original cut, and the ultimate uh, collector's edition will be available from September 6th, almost a year after blah, blah, blah. But more importantly, for those of you already looking at your calendars, that's just a mere 10 days before my birthday. <laughs> what? How convenient. <laughs> That shit's dramatic. This is pretty awesome, though. Like, I really would like to get this. Because I, first of all, absolutely love this movie. And, you know, getting the, like, I'm looking at, you know, the art cards and stuff. And it's, the stuff's pretty awesome looking. I could take or leave the statue, but, you know, the. Looks sweet on a desk. Yeah, the art book and the the stuff. Plus, you know, the documentary and all that stuff would be pretty awesome to uh, peruse over and over. So. I would just be happy with the Blu-ray, too, to be fair. I mean, I have it on DVD. I don't own it at all, and that's going to have to get corrected. So, yeah. I, I bought it when we were still were family video jockeys. Yeah. I don't know how I never bought the movie because it's one of my favorite animated movies for it sure. It is a goddamn classic. It is my favorite. An American classic. It's my favorite thing Vin Diesel has ever done. <laughs> Wait. Yes. You forget about the pacifier. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure pacifier got moved down to third because Guardians of the Galaxy came out. Hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Sorry. Wait, you forgot about. <laughs> no, no, Pitch Black is still oh. down the list. Away. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Triple X, not on. No, no. What about Triple X two? Uh, More X uh, or whatever. Uh. All right. So anyway, Thanks, yeah, give it to you. I just wanted to, uh, you know, uh, give an update on this because I did talk about it before, but now there's an actual date attached to it, and it's all fancified and defined as far as what comes with it. So, shout out to uh, Fluffy Bunny Ash for, uh, you know, uh, pointing me at this the other night because nice. I, I heard it got announced, but I didn't know that they had actually like, you know, finally de- de- detailed what all was coming in it. So, right. Boom. Boom. Shalak lock. All right. Now let's move to America's favorite part of the show. 
do 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 Q W do do. <laughs> That's our new Q W jingle. I know. We we really need a. Uh, we need some. We really need a Q of the W jingle. I should uh you know email Judge Mongo. <laughs> you should yeah. <laughs> um Q W Brian last week was gracefully provided to us by our Canadian pale mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Douglas Langeray. Yes. <laughs> Masterful of the frilly under things. Yes, indeed. Yes. Lord of the Mooses. <laughs> I believe that's how he's referred to up there. Yes. Yeah, I believe so. That's I how think the I've seen his plaque. Right. That's how the Mounties refer to him. I'm sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he asks us, while drunk, would you rather visit with elder grandparents or road trip with a pissed off woman? Mm-hmm. So on face page, I have a few answers. I have Big Dev, our pal from Snake Oil Comics, the uh, the entrepreneur behind the essence of Dev, <laughs> Fra- fragrance and kimono line. And lifestyle. And lifestyle. Yeah, it's a brand. Yes. Yeah. Elegant yet aggressive. <laughs> Fashionable yet aggressive. Oh, my bad. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> uh, he asked, how drunk am I? Am I falling down drunk or just crossing over into speech trouble territory if the latter i'll go grandparents because they are used to it now <laughs> if the former i'll take the pissed off woman because i'll just go into a beer coma that's fair that's fair that's fair mm-hmm. uh then we have clint from passersby not passers but nope. i'm looking ahead wrong uh, one chief former guest of passersby five <laughs> there you go i guess from geek dig from green up from the enthusiast? Was he on our enthusiast? No. We were on his show. He was on the crazy life. He was on the crazy all these guest appearances blur together, yeah. god damn it. Well, you know, when everyone you know, when you see everyone is ants, Tony. <laughs> well, you know, Macho King. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh pissed off woman, because then I can channel my inner asshole. Does he have a separate asshole? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, it's a, it's a weird medical with, condition he has. <laughs> yeah, he's got an asshole and an inner asshole. Yeah. <laughs> um, he can be as much as, a, as of a, much of a dick as I want and then blame it on the a, 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 alcohol. I put that in there right. in the morning. It's it's like a terrible conjoined twin situation. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, it's just awful. Yeah, the only the only thing that grew from your twin brother was his bum. <laughs> now when you eat, you'll be shitting from two orifices. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That'd be horrible. Yeah, Although be horrible. one, it'd be kind of, you know, if you could control the sphincter like it's a fire hose, you know? I'm making the motion good. like I'm using the top part of the fire, you know, the, like, clamp thing on the hose. Never mind. All right, moving on. All right, what else? Yeah, what's the rear condition known as double asshole. <laughs> In the biz, we call it a colon vestibule. <laughs> yeah. We also like to call it Brian's disease. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible movie. Uh, it says, today I consider myself, 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 the luckiest. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, last know. one from Face Pages from Matthew of Passers by Pod. There you go. He says, driving with the lady, because like Tony said, dot, 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 white noise. Why has it got to be a race Which thing, I can only assume is like Burt Baccarat on the radio. Yeah. Or... No, no. It's the Michael Keaton movie, remember? Oh, right. Yeah. Right. The truth. Whew, boy, that's a pull. That was a pull. Yeah. Man, I think it tore my rotator doing that. Anyway. I might have strained a double asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's easy enough to do. <laughs> it's true. It's a very sensitive area. I'm just picturing the guy. Do you remember on Ren and Stimpy, like, whenever they showed the old guy, like, straining, and he had, like, his bottom lip, like, curled in his mouth, like, yes. his teeth, and he's like, Arr! yeah, that's kind of what I'm picturing when you say straining your double asshole. Like, that's what he's doing to strain both of them. You hear that, or it's a bunch of assholes in a colander. <laughs> <laughs> what the? That's, okay, that's a way weirder image. All right. I'm getting a little tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It'll all be fixed tomorrow when there's delicious Scotty karate. That's true. Ah. Hey, wait. So. It's, it's Saturday. We should just go now. <laughs> Kick the window. Yeah. Actually, it'll probably open. Uh, I called. I said I'll be here tomorrow. It is officially tomorrow. <laughs> Where is my beer? <laughs> why, why are you going into a Mitch Hedberg thing? 
I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Moving on. You got any more? Why would I want a frozen banana? <laughs> but yes, I'll, I can't remember what that joke goes. No, <laughs> I don't want a frozen banana. But yes, because I want a I want a regular banana later. That's yes, right. there you go. <laughs> I couldn't remember it either. When you, yeah. Oh man, damn it. All right. <clears throat> Do you have any more? Or... No, that's no? from first right. page. That's all we got. All right. So from the Twitter machine, uh, our pal Soundboard T chimed in. Whoa, a rare occurrence, Soundboard right. T popping in over the internet. Yes, and it wasn't just him saying all day, which would have been hilarious. But he, um, did, he should have thrown in a hashtag all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Now, he did use the proper hashtag, so kudos for that. Oh. Beauty. Uh, he said he would visit elderly grandparents. He'd be in L.A. eating homemade turkey, burritos, and sweet potato pie. That's, that sounds lovely. That sounds awesome to me, yeah. Uh, Garrett, uh, our pal, of course, said he would choose grandparents because uh, she makes amazing pastries. So, again, sounds like a win to me. Yeah, really. Let's see. And then over here on the uh, emails... I get one from uh, our pal Cheeto uh, Bandito, and uh, he said that, uh, oh, actually, I, okay, so real quick to go back to the previous week where he had forgotten to uh, include a drawback on his, he responded to us by saying, damn, his drawback is that, you know, uh, you know, he would be drying all the vaginas. He put harsh but appropriately played, gentlemen. That's what we do. Uh, I said, do. now this week's cue of the W, I'm going to choose to entertain elderly relatives while nursing a wicked hangover. Why? Well, the only elderly relative that I have is my grandfather. He's 83, mobile, takes care of himself, and is cool as hell. Chances are he would end up making me hangover food and telling me to sleep on the couch for a bit while he watched the news and old gun smoke reruns. <laughs> Fuck that pissed <laughs> off woman in the car. She can drive her own damn self. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So there you go. All right. That is the recaps. Noise. Now, I was thinking, mm -hmm. I really like this Better Call Cliff idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of want to know what people would chime in if they're Better Call Blank shows. Better Call or Blank? Better Call Blank. Like, take it, they need to take a sitcom person. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I don't know if they want to alter their, their origin like we did of Cliff Clavin. Yeah. Well, you kind of have to because that is what Better Call Saul is. is exactly, yeah. That you're you're showing what he was before he took on the Saul Goodman persona. Yeah. You know, and really that's the reason we're watching that show. You know, that's the reason that you went into the show initially is you want to see why he, what turns him into Darth Vader, you know. Exactly. So, you know. So I'm with you so on I that. I need I need to know people's opinion on Better Call Blank. Right. I mean, I don't know if you want to throw in anything else. I think we nailed it with better. Nah, I, I just don't even think we could dare to top that. I mean, we've yeah. just given uh, we've given an, a, a network all the shows they could want in this episode. It's true. Between the T Rex cooking and yeah, better cooking call with the Cliff. Rexes. <laughs> yeah, cooking with the Rexes. <laughs> <laughs> better call Cliff, and I feel like there was something else we said, and I don't remember what it is now. So. Because, ah, uh, horse shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's there somewhere. Ah, uh, horse yeah. shit. Well, you know, it's it's recorded for later, you know. Yeah. That's what we do here. That's, that's what this show is. It's just, you know, two hours of our brainstorming sessions and then. This is actually going to be perfect for future generations. Yes. Somewhere yeah. down the line, someone's going to listen to this and go, why wasn't this ever made? Like, exactly. What, you know, and then cooking with the Rexes will be made. You and I will be like, you know, sitting in a nursing home somewhere and just realize that cooking with the Rexes is coming on. <laughs> it, it'll, it'll be like in a year 3000. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like sitting in like tinfoil crystal, ca you know, castles. Right. And they got those sweet shades on. There's holograms of us on the wall <laughs> doing air guitar. No, no. My head's going to be in a jar. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Futurama style. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, as long as we're still doing air guitar, because yeah. we reunited the universe Obviously. with uh, our podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, much like Wild Stallions. Sure. Which we should have Wild Stallion cast. <laughs> <laughs> You're Just right. Saying. We should. Yeah. 
Yeah, mm. I agree with this. This is uh, this is exactly how it's going to go down. You know, that'll happen, and then they'll bring us back. You know, uh, or bring us to the future to show us. You know, uh, what we did. Exactly. You know, and then we'll you know we'll we'll just uh, treat them as though they're underlings because we'll be both dressed like Macho Man, or you'll be dressed like Macho Man. I'll be dressed like Ric Flair. <laughs> oh, thank God, it's Ric Flair! If I can say Miss Elizabeth, <laughs> yeah. really nice sparkly dress, <laughs> close wardrobe, but no, slightly yeah. different. One's a dress, one's a robe. <laughs> Well, no, it's a perfect future as if we're getting back in our phone booth and you look up at the guy on the throne and you go, have a beer, you'll be fine. He goes, stay salty. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Like, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. I'm with you. Okay, so to clarify, the Q of the W this week is what would be your better call blank show? And and again, yeah. I would prefer it if it's, you know, you give us a, a bit of a synopsis on. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a little elaboration, a little what, backstory. What's the character change? Like, what what is, you know, why? I think, do... it's, I think it's up to the provider of the character. Right. Like, like we decided Cliff Clavin used to be a deadly hitman. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, you never know. It could be like, uh, um, I'm trying to think of someone, uh, better call Jack Tripper. And he, he used to be like a pedophile priest. Wow. <laughs> and now he's a swinging dude living with some chicks. Wow. That's, that's quite a change. No steelies, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I think it's time for us to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean forever. I don't mean this episode. I just it's over, Johnny. Damn, yeah, we didn't even make it two fifty. No. Damn close. Though. We're putting it in a body bag. Gonna need a bunch of buddy bags, oh, boy. All right. So you got anything else, or, or is no, this where I we're, think, uh, we're doing the I wrap ups? All right. All right. Let's do the wrap ups then. Uh, go to saltylanguage dot com for all the links, back episodes. Uh, you can check out the networks we're part of, like Tangent Bound Network, Pod Gods Network. Uh, Geek Life Radio thingamajig. Um, Wicked Radio Network. Um, Wicked. Wicked. Yeah, that's what it. Game was that from? Wicked. I don't know. That was from a video game. Wicked. <laughs> Who knows, man? It's probably. Yeah, I don't know. Smash TV or something. I don't know. I'm just, dude. <laughs> I'm just making a random poll. Fucking Smash TV <laughs> poll. <laughs> nice. Um, I would play the shit out of that game right now. You probably could. I'm sure there's an emulator. I'm sure there is too, yeah. but it's but not the same. It's not going to happen anyway. You'll be like, oh, I'm going to play this, and then you'll fall asleep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> fall asleep and you know, bust my dome open on this. Fucking dumbbell over here. Yeah, it'll pretty much be like when we were teenagers. So, you yeah, know. Yeah, basically. Yeah, at this time of night, you'd be like, I'm going to keep playing all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's the other yeah. network we're part of? Oh, shit, Brian. Danger! Watch your back! Danger! Entertainment. And uh, also, you know, if you're going to do any Amazon shopping, please swing by saltylanguage.com first. Click the Amazon banner, then go. Uh, it'll take you right to Amazon. Then just shop as normal. They throw us a little bit of a referral fee. Does not cost you anything else except a couple extra clicks, and you can help Tony and I, uh, you know, keep the lights on. World domination. World domination. Get help us get a wizard tower and yeah. and, and start production on uh, you know cooking up the Rexes. Right? No, no, that's the second show. Remember, we're better call Cliff is first. Oh yeah, right. Better yeah, call. We're Cliff. getting that done first. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. For sure. Rex is or Rex E. Mm. Uh, well, again, we have writers for this garbage. Okay. You know. Um, and uh, let's see what else is there. All the links are on the the site that you need. Uh, if you're on Facebook, please check us out at uh, facebook.com dot slash salty language. Uh, give us a like over on that. Uh, if you check us out, however it is that you get us, whether it's Stitcher or iTunes or whatever, please give us a, a you know, a review, uh, thumbs up, uh, share us, 
uh, all that kind of stuff because it helps us. It's uh, the tasty way to share the show. Absolutely. And it helps us get uh, a little more, uh, uh, you know, helps us get some more listeners potentially. Um, if you're looking for new podcasts, check out hashtag Potter and Family on Twitter. There's all sorts of podcasts that are little, uh, or little, geez, they're, they're indie podcasts. We're all trying to help each other out uh, to get some attention because we don't have the big engines behind us like the you know big fancy uh, podcasts do. So check right. out some of those shows. Uh, eh, the best way to contact the show is on the Twitters at Salty underscore Language. You can find me at Stunami. I am at, as always, Monotony. Right. And then if you want to find the show on, uh, like, Instagram or Salty Language on there, right? Indeed, Brian. I always forget. I just don't post enough on there. Um, and then, you know, like I said, all the other links are on the web page, so, you know, you can find it there. Yeah. Or hit all us up and we can... medias. Yeah. Or hit us up or we can, and we can you know, hook you up with what you need for sure. And, uh, we should have a new enthusiast coming out soon. So that's exciting. So our triumphant return, a a local guy. We're both very excited to talk to. Yeah. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Indeed. It's a Thursday. Yeah. Unless you're listening to this in the past sometime or in the future or in the future or currently, then it's the, (laughs) yeah, fuck. (laughs) Whoa. Mind blown. (laughs) All right, and with that, we will say, have a beer, you'll be fine. Hopefully, it's a delicious bourbon barrel-aged Scotty Karate like we're hopefully both going to be enjoying. It won't be because we're drinking them all, Uh, and they're not as lucky as we are. (laughs) You may be right. stay salty. Right. And um, uh, just like I was to you, salty. Right. And remember, stay fashionable, yet aggressive. Hmm.